It's time for Mac Break Weekly, first episode of 2024. Jason Snell's here, Andy Anako, Alex Lindsay. Of course, what are we going to talk about? The Vision Pro, it's coming. Why Apple never released an iPad in 2023 and what they might do in 2024. And why the Massimo lawsuit is an on-again, off-again affair. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 902, recorded Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. In the history of melon trucks. This episode of Mac Break Weekly brought to you by Wild Grain. Oh, I love Wild Grain. It's the first ever Bake from Frozen subscription box. What do you get? Sourdough breads, fresh pastas, artisanal pastries. Every item sits in your freezer, then bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less without thawing. Let me tell you, those croissants are better than the croissants you get in France. We made them. We made them here at work, and they were so good. You bite into a hot croissant. I'll give you a little wild grain tip. You don't have to bake all of them. They're in the freezer. You take one out. You bake it. You have your nice croissant for breakfast. You're going to have another one tomorrow. And the sourdough bread, the walnut bread. Oh, my gosh. You could fully customize your wild grain box so you can get any combination of breads, pastas, and pastries you like. So all bread, all pasta, all pastries. You want it? You can have it. Plus, for a limited time, $30 off the first box. Plus, free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash MacBreak to start your subscription free croissants you heard me in every box and thirty dollars off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash macbreak those croissants are so good wildgrain.com slash macbreak the promo code macbreak at checkout wildgrain.com slash macbreak promo code macbreak at checkout it's time for macbreak weekly hello happy 2024 i didn't even think i'd be alive in 2024 <laughs> But I'm here. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't recently I thought that. But as a kid, I thought, you know, you do the calculation. The year 2000, I'll be 46. Or what was it? 44. Yep. I can't, you know, <laughs> and you don't go past that. I love it when I see the ads for one of the car makers. I think it's Honda. says, we're going to be carbon neutral by 2050. And I'm going, wait a minute. That's 27 years from <laughs> 20. <laughs> okay. Hello, Andy and Akko, Chicago Sun Times, former everybody's guy, and then WGBH in Boston. And this is the year Anako.com will be launching. <laughs> Anako.com as a website, as a newsletter, as something. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to actually release a something. No, you I'm, don't. You don't, you don't really. I'm just no uh, I, I, I kind of do because like I don't have enough places to like I, 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 yeah, we have opinions we have thoughts we have reactions we have insights and uh, I have a I have a a, a stuffed Dalmatian uh, that I can explain these things to it is not very very rewarding for me or the stuffed Dalmatian toy for me to share with her. so I'd like to share it with actual people and a website actual people who is would, better who than a stuffed Dalmatian now you know exactly the truth On, in many ways in not, many not ways, to, maybe not. To, not. not to diss yeah. my stuffed Dalmatian, because he's <laughs> he's he's been with me for the past seventeen years, and loyalty is definitely. You think you think dogs are loyal? How about one that's actually a large stuffed toy that has no agency of its own? That <laughs> that will be with you, man. It's never gonna go. Mister Happy New Year, Andy. Happy New Year to Happy Alex Year. Lindsay, Office Hours Global, and uh, hello, hello, parts unknown. Hello, Alex. How are you? Good Did you have year. a good New Year? I had a great year. Did you stay year. up to we, midnight? Uh, no, 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 I did not. No. I I celebrate when New Year's hits the United States in New York. So I watch That's the New York ball drop. We <laughs> do our little champagne thing. We're like it, it, it's around. It's it's in the country. And then we go to bed. Then we go to bed. <laughs> so I, that's why it's, I don't need to stay up. But we did I have was a great, little disappointed because the the rock and New Year's used to end at <laughs> nine p.m. Pacific, <laughs> and we could go to bed. And now they're time shifting it, which really I know, takes the time fun shifting, out of it. It's really frustrating. I, I had the, the the live streams weren't as good. I one thing I did notice was how great the live streams look when they are 
when the cameras are where they, you know, where they're doing the show. Yeah. But there was an earth camera, whatever, that's up high looking down. And I was like, that is the most pathetic looking thing I've Only ever seen. You like there's all that. these weird, <laughs> like all this, like, all, you know, all this stuff, all God. people jammed together in these little, these little boxes. Oh yeah. You of, don't want to ever go to and, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no. It was just like, it looked like the, 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 the most amazingly bad thing to, to actually go to. Yeah. Um, and, but it looks great when you're, when the camera's lower. Sure. And, uh, it's and, all those and, heads. That was, you don't see but that's the, what I noticed. The pens. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So, but I'm going to get a VPN. I've decided I'm going to get a VPN for YouTube next time so that I can just say, hey, I'm in New York. And then, that's a good idea. And then get the New York feed. That's get the New next, York feed. That's a great show. idea. <laughs> also with us, Jason Snell, who went home for the holidays, but is back in studio. You never know with Jason. It could be a green yeah. screen. You know, my, my I was briefly at my mom's house and she got COVID and I came home. But oh, no. I was here, not Phoenix. I'm not from Phoenix. I'm not from Arizona. That's where, just where my mom lives. She's doing okay. But yeah, we, we had a little uh, audible called and my, uh, my kids came here to California and we just did a, we just, we nested. We did our, our classic. So you four flew plus down, animals. got there. Flew down, got my mom, got exposed to COVID, uh, got her some antivirals, Good. Uh, made sure she was doing Get okay, and then, flew, yeah. and then flew home and did a uh, did a little quarantine until I yeah. had she never got multiple it. negative tests. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that was a mess. And this has spoiled my joke, which is that I'm still dialing 2023 on all my rotary dial telephones. <laughs> okay, sing. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> um, that is a callback to something probably most of you didn't hear, which is before the show they were talking about <laughs> weird rotary dial old telephones old very old tech old and tech. then but it's an interesting twist because i think many of the uh, younger people in the audience won't understand this thing about writing checks i don't think we do yes. that anymore <laughs> i know I, I see i took it further by saying let's let's put it even further in yes, the past went, by Pat, making it about went, a rotary I dial understand. telephone or punch cards i'm punching 2023 on all my uh vax Punch cards, <laughs> quite IBM punch cards. I don't, I don't think know. an AI could have done that. This is proving no. that you're a human, which I appreciate. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's right. That's, that's going to be the true sign <laughs> in the future is if it's a really bad dad joke, we know it's actually by a dad <laughs> and not an AI. So that's that's a, that's like a really, really bad test for artificial intelligence. This is gonna, can they do dad jokes? This is going to be the year for AI for, for sure. Uh, but Apple still... I'd like still to think so. Thank you very much. <laughs> Andy Anako, ladies there and gentlemen, you. get it? Uh, but uh, by the Sorry. way, you might want to change your name, Andy, because I think this is going to be confusing for you. I actually, I like all the headlines that's saying that AI is going to be replacing <laughs> 300,000 jobs. AI is the biggest menace and we need regulation against it. He's just so powerful. Uh, the possibilities of AI are endless. That's This is all good marketing. This is another reason why I need to get Anako.com up and running. Yet. I get so confused because they keep naming things Leo. And that's confusing, but I can only imagine what you're what you're going. Yeah. What oh, you're no, going no. through. Yeah. I have I have I have a close I have a close relative who I don't I don't want to get I don't want to give it away, but like a very controversial uh, politician came to prominence like eight years ago with like their last name. It's not a very uh, usual last name, and so she went from being completely anonymous, yeah. like ordering pizza or whatever. Oh, ha ha. Oh, ha. Reagan or Jablonowitz or whatever. It's like, oh God, I, I remember, I remember when I could just sad, board, huh? board a plane without it, yeah. without having to anticipate a joke. I attempt not to make jokes about people's names because I figure they've heard them all. Probably. Sometimes so. I fail. Well, well, yeah. Let me tell you the, uh, the smell jokes. Yeah. Woo! Mm -hmm. I have heard them all. They're hilarious. Yeah. Well done, everyone. Yeah, I've, I've been to junior high school. Yeah. Just Thank be you. glad your name is not Ray <laughs> Vagina. I'm just saying it could be worse. Uh, let's see. This is, we'll catch you up on the saga of the Apple Watch, which is now officially, <laughs> is it for sale or not for sale? It's for sale now. It is for sale. It's back for sale. Okay. They, 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 they as <laughs> the president Apple, let Apple. the president let us all down and did not uh, overturn <laughs> the International Trade Commission ruling that Apple's watch infringed on Massimo's patents and could not be sold in the U.S. Apple pro act preemptively uh, pulled the Apple Watch Ultra and uh, I think was it the Series Nine, the ones that do blood yeah. pulse oximeter readings, pulled them all out of the stores. Uh, but then put them right back because a court came in and said, well, wait a minute. And injunction has, injunction has stayed that boy, the lawyers were working over the holidays has stayed that until a couple of weeks from now. So they may still have to do that. Meanwhile, they yeah. are furiously working. There are some Apple employees who've been at the Apple campus all Christmas 
sadly working, uh, tippy tapping with their elven hammers on some sort of software <laughs> update that would avoid the import ban. Yeah, am I am I up to mass, date now? <laughs> you're, you're you're up to date. Basically, all basically all that happened was that Apple had to run down the clock before they could fi but they could, before they could start filing appeals and before a court could. Basically, the the, the federal government had to say, okay, we are not going to get involved with this before they would start to hear appeals. As soon as they filed an appeal, they didn't. The court did not side with Apple. They just simply said that okay, you can continue to sell Apple watches while we settle this while this is going through the courts. Uh, Massimo CEO has been very very clear that say well go ahead apple if you want to try to try to create a software fix or you got to keep busy in these trying times but we we insist that it's a hardware problem it's not a software problem you will not be able to satisfy uh, this patent infringement by just patching uh, the watch os so again good luck it is Hope not it unprecedented president obama 10 years ago vetoed an itc patent ruling that would have banned older models of the iphone and ipad uh, so it that was not Samsung, yeah. not an American company. Massimo uh, is actually an American company, and so right. political, and of course the political tenor of uh, big tech and things like yeah. that. It's it, it's a tougher, a tougher case all around. Although this is, I mean, it strikes me that this process, like Andy said, they're waiting and then they do this, and and and. A, 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 uh, having this be paused is a good idea because the idea is you don't want to do damage and having the watches not on sale is doing damage to mm -hmm. Apple's business when there are still more court fights to, to be had in the future. Also, like, we all know the end result of this is not the, and then the Apple Watch was never sold again, right? <laughs> there is a process to be worked through while negotiations are probably going on sporadically. And at, at the end, somebody will get some level of satisfaction and, uh, you know, but but so, yeah, so the process continues perhaps endlessly. Who knows? Wesley yeah. Hilliard writing in uh, Apple Insider this paragraph. You can decipher for your very own self. The ITC could deny the extended stay on or before January 10th. But if Apple's software update passes customs investigation, the Apple watches could go back on sale as soon as January 12th. Apple's software approach with customs would prove a victory, according to the ITC. I don't even know how to uh, chart that what i don't under mm -hmm. so right now are they selling it they can but yes. i think they're are they yes. are okay they put them back yeah, on the they're, shelves they're back back on the shelves okay. now okay but How until january 10th a lot of, you need more yarn you need more red yarn for your <laughs> well, board and, and, and the reality <laughs> is i mean i think that there was some number that was floating around like apple loses 185 million or 135 million dollars a day but the reality of that is that there was probably a surge right before it happened right they flushed the market in Best Buy and everywhere else right. with it, the chances of Apple losing very much money on this so far is probably pretty low. I do believe, though, I think we talked about this in the last show, that this all came up because Apple went after Massimo over their watch. So the thing is, is that I think that that's what opened no. this can of worms. I think that Massimo, I, I don't think that Massimo took on this legal, this is 2018. I think that, that Massimo, that Ma Massimo built a watch that looks exactly like or very close to an Apple watch. And I believe that that what opened the can of worms, um, if as I was reading through this uh, and through a bunch of articles, and I don't have it right in front of me, unfortunately, but that what opened the can of worms is Apple sued Massimo over patent infringement over their watch, and Massimo was like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> and then they went, and then they went the other direction, and that's what, like, I think that Apple unwrapped this on their own. Like, it's the, you know, I don't think that I think Apple. This was a, I mean, in addition to meeting with a company and then not making a deal with them and then taking their technology, that that's step one of probably thing they shouldn't have done. Step two is, is uh, you know, going after them over their watch. But I think it, we, I, I believe that that was in one of the many articles that I was scanning through to, to go through this, is that Apple actually kind of opened the can of worms after they had created the can of worms, you know? Yeah. And so I think that this is, this is, a, this is something that, again, Massimo has said they're willing to have a conversation about, you know, royalties. Like, it's not like it's, as, as Jason said, it's not like that it's going to go away. It's just, Apple's just not wanting to pay another yeah. dollar, a, a, you know, pay a dollar a, a watch to, for that process. I, I don't think that's, that timeline is correct. I'd have to double check my, my own notes from a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I think that they launched their lawsuit before Apple did anything counter. Uh, this, this lawsuit is, this, this action has been going on for quite a while. The um, Wall Street and Journal in kind of an uh, unprompted article a couple of days ago, all about uh, Joe Kiani, who's the CEO of Massimo, featuring family photos 
from from early days. Just so you know, there's Joe with a, in a striped shirt with a page boy haircut with his mom. <laughs> I don't know why in Alabama. Uh, and then here's Joe a little later on on the waterfront in Southern California after getting his master's degree. I couldn't quite parse this. Like, again, what is Apple up to? Is it uh, I feel like Apple has some clout with the journal and may have may have kind of implied that Massimo is a patent troll, that Kiani has done this before and is kind of aggressive. Um, they do yeah, point out is, that it's cost him a lot of money. Is not yeah that story is not particularly meaningful. I mean, I right. read it hoping it would be like why he's doing it, and he and the answer is like the last line of it. He's like because it's right. I'm like yeah. okay, right. <laughs> he's, he's done this and before. The journal points yeah. out in 2006, he uh, won a seven year patent dispute with Nelcor, that also made a pulse oximeter. In 2016, he sued Royal Phillips. So he's done this before. This is uh, they're, they're estimating a hundred million dollar lawsuit uh, for him. So, but but as to who did what, when, first, and so forth, they don't really, uh, I don't think, really clear that up. At 2013, Massimo showed a portable pulse oximeter that hooked up to Apple devices. A few months later, Apple reached out. This is from the Journal article. Representatives of the company met in 2013. Apple officials said, we didn't dig deep into the technology. The meeting didn't last long. We never met in person again. This is relevant because Massimo says uh, they, they met with Massimo to, to steal the technology. Uh, at the time of the Apple Watch development, says the journal Apple met with and many other small players, not just Massimo, quoting the company. Apple also said the two never got close to working together because Massimo was more focused on the clinical side. Ah, and this, this lends credence to what you were saying, Alex, that Hey, just as long as you stay in your lane, Massimo, and don't go into the consumer side, we might not have a problem. A few months after that initial meeting, Apple did hire Massimo's chief medical officer. Later, it added a top engineer who was working in a Massimo spinoff, as well as dozens of other Massimo employer employees. Uh they did, those employees did testify in a, in a later trial that they did not bring any information to the company. In fact, Apple said explicitly, don't. But you know, what's in your brain is in your brain. 2019, six years later, Apple publishes patents listing the former engineer of the Massimo spinoff as the inventor. Fa co founding co-inventor of Massimo's technology said, it felt like a knife in my stomach. It was truly painful. <laughs> Massimo sued in 2020. And remember uh, that guy, uh, another report said that that guy who left Massimo actually approached Apple, yeah. that they didn't try to recruit him. He, he, he apparently approached them and then he was also a bad cultural fit and didn't last at Apple. So he, they did all of this. And then like within a year, I think he was gone because he was, he wanted to like his own team and yeah. like he was a big surprise. Cause I mean, if there's ever a company that just, is a bad cultural fit for almost everybody. It's <laughs> Apple, so yeah. But so it's yeah, it's a it's it's a mess. Massimo, I just think has, Massimo has two complaints: one with the Federal Trade Commission, but also a trade secret case over this, you know, sure. transfer of knowledge that went to trial according to the Journal, but had a hung jury last spring, and is scheduled to go back in court this year. Yeah, and if the, and if that's significant, it was a hung jury because one of the six jurors that could not uh, f five agreed, one could not uh, agree on a verdict, and that's what caused the hung jury. Yeah. So so it's not as though there was like that's that's why jury trials are super super weird. All you need is one person, and that's 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 why that's why you settle 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 rather than let this go in front of a jury. It's this is one of those cases where both sides are pretty intractable. Apple says we're not going to let a patent troll whenever because that would just open the door to other patent trolls and massimo says no we're not going to let somebody steal our technology even if they're the biggest company in the yeah. world uh we're going to fight it is a big fight for them they have 144 million dollars a year profit and they've spent 100 million of that on this yeah. suit it's, it's it really it really does it really does seem like a uh like you're trying to do a excuse me like a, anyone who anyone who tries to paint massimo as a patent troll is really actively trying to smear the company 
because this is a company that has a long, long history in biomedical research and biotech. Yeah. They, it's, it, this isn't like a company that you've never heard of because they buy patents and they buy struggling companies just to have a patent portfolio. So uh, not that, and, uh, that so there's still, of course, a lot to discuss about this, but the idea, uh, the idea of, oh, well, this is just another company that's trying to hold up a big company for a big settlement. That's Keanu, totally Keanu, that. Keanu says the, we're the, willing to settle with Apple, but they have not approached us. They, uh, right. And, yeah. and the, and the, and the issue is, is that it's not only is it not, they not, not only are they not a patent troll, but this is a core product for them. And Apple will make, you know, Apple will make, a, if you look at like a live core is doing, you know, has the same complaints about Apple doing things they're doing. This becomes ex, an existential threat for them because if everybody has a glucose, an accurate or semi-accurate glucose monitor on their, uh, on their watch, if that actually, you know, comes out and starts to have, you know, if, if, or, or not, or the, you know, all of the blood oxygen, um, the chances of them buying other products becomes very low. Like even if they're, even if those products are more accurate or better, it's not going to matter. They have one that is good enough, you know, and, and that is, so it's a real, or blood oxygen, um, you know, glucose is next, right? <laughs> Probably <laughs> Apple doesn't want to fight that one either. Um, but, but blood oxygen with the blood oxygen level, you know, people, once they have something that's good enough, that's always on their wrist that came with their watch, the chances of moving over, so it's it's a it's a real problem for Massimo. I think that I, I really feel like Apple should find a way to, you know, I can understand not open wanting wanting to make it feel like even if they lose, they want to make sure that you realize that someone spent a hundred million dollars trying to. It's for every little company, like hey, this is what it takes to win, yeah. is to you know. So even if they even if they lose this, they win in the sense of everyone looks at what the fight's going to look like if you get into it. Yeah. Moss, it's interesting. There's a little zinger from Kiani at the end of his Bloomberg Technology interview. Uh, he said, part of the problem here is Apple isn't building their stuff in the U.S. There'd be no import ban if they built it in the U.S. We build <laughs> our stuff in the U.S. Little zing. That is a zinger. Little zing. <laughs> you can't uh, block something, import or something if it's made in the uh, America. America. That would be an interesting uh, choice for Apple is to say, well, okay, we'll just build it here. Be hard. A hard choice. More yeah. expensive, but more expensive than yeah. doing what they're doing now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know, I mean, strategy. should somebody it's, like me uh, who loves his Apple Watch Ultra and uses the blood oximeter from time to time, should I feel bad about, about this? <laughs> this is why we have courts, so we don't yeah. have to feel bad. Let them, <laughs> let them decide. <laughs> okay. figure, let, let them figure uh, it out. Okay. <laughs> Law eases the pain. Let yeah, somebody exactly. who can't be fired from their job tell me whether, whether I should feel bad or not. That's, I like I'm it. happy with that. I'm good with that. <laughs> Uh, all right. Let's see. What? Uh, oh, congratulations, by the way, uh, Mr. Snell, for for fully deconstructing your Touch ID button, and 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 set it aside as a standalone fingerprint reader for so your Mac. What What is interesting about this whole thing is the way that this happened. Is I wrote a piece on Six Colors at the end of the year that's basically like, what are my setups? Well, what's my setup out here? What's my setup in my sort of alternate studio that I've got? Um, cause that's new this year and people, cause people always ask like, what, you know, what computer do you use and what monitor do you use and what are all your peripherals? And one of the things I mentioned, including like what keyboard I have out here was, I also have this deconstructed thing that I did in, in like 2022, I think, I think it's more than a year now that I've had this deconstructed thing, but John Gruber then reads my, what I'm, what my setup is clicks on the link about the uh, <laughs> about the touch ID sensor, writes a post on Daring Fireball about the link from 2022 to the touch ID sensor. And then I start to hear from all these people about my touch ID sensor, which has not changed in, in more than a year. <laughs> yeah, we talked the, about it on the show the, we a did. year ago. We yeah. did. And I have, I mean, actually the photo on Six Colors is not the, even the 3D printed case. I got a new 3D printed case that actually has a back. So you don't have to have oh, tape Oh, congratulations. On it. Well, that's a big Yeah, well, yeah, thank you. Victory. And so I, I now, yeah, so it's great. So now I have, yeah, a little touch ID sensor and a little 3D printed case and it sits on my desk. And uh, I agree, like John Gruber's point was, you know what they should do is. They is, should do this. Is put this on the magic trackpad, yeah. which they probably won't. Um, but. You know, and, and I've seen arguments. It's like, oh, well, but, you know, a button is ungainly and it's a smooth surface and all that. It's like, I don't know. There are all these stories that we've talked about about the last five years about how they investigated Touch ID technology under glass. I thought, well, maybe you could do Touch ID on like screen. on the Magic Trackpad, but have it not oh, even be, yeah, yeah. not even be yeah. like 
visible, really, just Ooh. like have a little space where you could put just it in the corner your, and it would yeah. and it would read your track. A anyway, I, as somebody who doesn't use an Apple keyboard, Touch ID is real convenient. So I bought a Touch ID keyboard and took it apart. And I don't recommend that people try this at home. I wish Apple would sell an overpriced Touch ID button just for those of us who are sickos and don't use yeah. their keyboard, <laughs> I would pay their overpriced price for it because I literally paid the price for a keyboard and threw everything but the button away. And in John so, Gruber's yeah. defense, it was December 28th. He had There's to write something. On. I love it. I love it. You know, it's is, just funny. This is that your it's, post from and, August and John, 2022. I mean, it's a and year John and a half. John saw old. it. John saw it and was interested by it. What's funny then, because of the weight that John carries in the community, is all these yeah. other people start reacting to this topic yeah. Yeah. and citing my piece. Yeah. And and like, you know, when 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 I write something and John links to it right away, I don't, I mean, I can usually tell because usually there's a little lag and I can see this. Here's the daring fireball effect happen. Right. But it's very obvious when it's something that I posted 16 months before. <laughs> and now suddenly everybody wants to talk to me about it. I'm like, oh, uh, even wonder me. where you got that and idea. And I even knew that you published this a year and yeah. a half ago because hey, I was here. You know, it's, there's nothing to talk about uh, because <laughs> it was the end of the year. It, you're right. So it, it's I'm happy to talk about it again. It's a really cool thing. I love having it. And I wish Apple would, uh, you know, sell an overpriced thing or put it in <laughs> uh, the trackpad because I love the trackpad. Do and you agree I use with John who says they probably won't? I think they, yeah, I agree because I think they probably philosophically think it belongs on the keyboard and they love their keyboard i guess but like a lot of us don't love their keyboards and right. their keyboards are great but like oh, I, have, I can't I, use other keyboards. I used to tape it under my desk right like before yeah. I, I broke it off into his little box it was there's another post that john did link to where i had velcroed an entire keyboard under my desk you talked about that with the touch well. id button yeah. yeah right at the front so i could just stick my finger under my desk which was stupid <laughs> but it worked uh, and then I lock, I had software to lock out all the other keys in case I press them accidentally. It's like, again, I think that there's a market for something like this. I, and it's a case where Apple has to basically make it themselves. Unfortunately, like there's no third party touch ID button. And so here we are, we're kind of left in this weird, says, at least there are 3d printers just now. Just buy a laptop for Christ's sake. You know? It just proves, <laughs> it proves, however, oh, one thing, which I've always suspected, which is that John Gruber track. is a time Lord. Right, he doesn't. He, time he is just, meaningless to him. It's a constant. Well, I love, I love it when we we both are under an embargo for a review, review, and like my review and the Verge's review, and like all those reviews hit right at right on time at, at whatever the embargo time is. And like eight hours later, Gruber posts a story. He's like, I don't care. It's great. I he love it. He doesn't to. need to. He doesn't have to. And he doesn't. It's why he is the daring fireball. He is the master time. Are space. merely podcast hosts. mortals, just mortals. mortals, mere mortals in his presence uh one more story before we take a break let's see um at, ooh, well this is an interesting one from ars technica uh there is and has been for the last four years a backdoor in the iphone the triangulation backdoor the most advanced exploit ever says dan gooden in ars technica and what's interesting it was among other places applied against employees of Kaspersky, the uh, antivirus security company, and dozens of iPhones, according to Gooden, belonging to employees of Kaspersky, were infected by triangulation. This came out uh, just before the break, uh, the Wednesday before Christmas. Uh, or no, yeah, actually the Wednesday after Christmas. So those guys were working up late. Yeah, and one of, the, one of the most interesting parts of it is that they they exploited four the the hack exploited four different vulnerabilities. One of which uses a uh, what's being described as an undocumented feature uh, of of, of uh, memory uh, memory man, excuse me uh, undocumented MMI, MMIO registers uh, the ability to basically directly address stuff that stuff on a very very low level that didn't was not thought to be possible beforehand. Apple apparently knew of it and had taken some sort of a very weak method to try to secure it, but it certainly wasn't enough. And these four things, but as, as, as often happens, basically a first hack just gets you into the system, but you can't do anything because you don't have enough privileges. Every subsequent layer of it got you deeper and deeper until with this, uh, with this, uh, the final version of this, it was the classic send somebody an iMessage message 
doesn't matter if they open it or not. That fo- that phone is owned, and it wasn't just Kapersky. It was basically government officials, oh, yeah. uh, business sure officials. Was this was used. really, really yeah. big and really, really super bad. Two uh, CVE through four CVEs, uh, which Apple has since patched. So we should uh, reassure you this is not this is no longer exploitable. But boy, a, read a the bunk, story. A bug. In the true type font handler yes. of all things. <laughs> well, anybody who listens to Steve Gibson's security now, uh, as I have for the last thousand episodes, uh, knows that the big a big vulnerability is interpreters. And true type is not uh, a bitmap. True type is a program. And you have a true type font interpreter, which interprets the program and displays the font on the screen. That's what gives it all the capabilities. Interpreters are almost always the problem uh, on Windows and Macintosh. That's why messages... Uh, is often the target because it has interpreters for a variety of file types. Uh, and those are li- just basically little program code runners that are running program code that come in over the transom. Always uh, a, a vector. And uh, it's, it took Kaspersky 12 months, they say, of intensive investigation to uh, to, f- to figure this out. Uh, so I'm guessing these hackers are nation state. What would be really interesting, and in fact, I think it's probably the case, is that they are Russian because a nation state, because Kaspersky is a Russian company. And we we know that uh, Kaspersky has been implicated, you know, not directly, but has been implicated in some leaks of uh, U.S. spy technology. And uh, the the thinking always was, well, probably uh, somebody at the NSA had Kaspersky's antivirus running. And one of the things the antivirus does is quarantine and exploits and send them back to the home office in in Moscow. And the question was, well, is there a a mole inside Kaspersky or is Kaspersky actively cooperating with the Russian government? Well, or maybe, (laughs) just maybe, (laughs) the Russian government has had an exploit on Kaspersky's phones for all this time and they didn't have to bother. Uh, Very, very interesting story. I'm sure Steve will cover it uh, on Security Now later today. Yeah, but fear not. You have you have. Is that why we got like four updates in the last week? <laughs> it seems yeah. like there've been a, quite a few. Oh yeah, updates. And, and, and 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 according to, according to Kaberski and others, it's it's not wasn't just the iPhone. The same exploit was was uh, they, this the same exploit was developed for Apple Watch for <laughs> for Jeez. Apple TV for Holy everything. Cow. And so although it had only been seen in the wild as an exploit against the iPhone, so it's like that was. I, I hope that I, I'm trying. I'm struggling to understand technically exactly everything that was going on. Like, like, like Jason, I kind of like got to. Oh wow, okay, true type hack. I kind of get that. Then you get to the lower, lower level stuff. There was some discussion amongst uh, some security boards I was reading about how was this uh, was this a problem that Apple created, or is this a problem with ARM? Is this a problem with something else? Because it seemed to be something that caught a lot of people off guard, and so it, we, you, you don't know where the where the responsibility ultimately lies. Yeah, Gooden's article implicates case both apple and arm so that's very interesting uh if it is arm that's really interesting because of course apple yeah. is the, isn't the only licensee of arm uh, technology um in fact there are a lot of arm processors in almost every phone out there <laughs> uh speaking of hacking uh you may remember when apple warned indian officials uh that a nation state had been breaking into their phone that made Prime Minister Narendra, Narendra Modi's uh, prom party uh, quite upset. Hmm. <laughs> the Washington Post says hmm. a day after Apple warned independent Indian journalists and uh, opposition party politicians in October that government hackers may have tried to break into their iPhones, officials under Modi promptly took action against Apple. Hmm. <laughs> they publicly questioned whether the Silicon Valley company internal threat algorithms were faulty. And, yeah. and just in case... <laughs> Announced fake an investigation. Fake into, algorithm. Fake, it's fake algorithm. That's a new one. Don't don't give anybody any ideas. Announced an investigation into the security of Apple devices. Yeah. They also just, summoned, just, and this is more heavy-handed, an Apple security expert from outside the country to a meeting in New Delhi. <laughs> you you need to come to New Delhi. Um, yeah. They were really angry. <laughs> one of the people oh. said <laughs> they were really angry. Uh, so just in case you're not aware of this, Modi's government spies on its opposition uh, politicians yeah. and on in journalists in, uh, well, in India. We know that. There's a larger context here, too, right? Because, of course, 
relationships with India and some other countries, most notably Canada, are currently quite fraught because Canada said that there is a separatist group in India and one of their leaders is in Canada. And Canada recently said that the Indian government was trying to assassinate him in Canada, which yeah. Canada doesn't appreciate. No. And that the U.S. has said that there have also been some Indian actions against other separatists in the United States. And so there, there's a real tension going on here because, yeah. of course, what India says is, well, these are terrorists. Uh, what do you mean? But <laughs> but the, the people involved are like, no, we're not. We are <laughs> we're in opposition. opposition to the government. Right. Yeah. And and then Apple like steps right in it, too. So but this is what's been going on recently because Modi's government has... Uh, yes, has has uh, I, I don't know how to say it. I don't know enough about it. Like there is a lot of tension. Yes, uh, and Modi's sufficient. government seems to be heightening that's some sufficient. of that tension. They, we they, should point out, I, just to be completely fair, it's not like the U.S. would ever attempt to assassinate uh, a national of another country uh, in that country. Right. That would, but never. Canada ever Canada like, from yeah. the sky, yeah. <laughs> from the sky, <laughs> in their apartment yeah. in Beirut. Oh, in fact, it like, happened like, yesterday. Like well, well, there, there you go. Okay, never mind. You know, like so, so yeah. I mean, it's it like the. um yeah, the uh, I, I think that when our intelligence agencies get caught doing this, that that we they they quietly try to change all the laws over long periods of time. They don't wave the flag that says, "Hey, stop doing that." Right. <laughs> they just slowly keep on working working the angle. But I mean, all go all governments are doing what India is doing to some degree. It just depends on at what level and, yeah. and well, the, spy, the, the, spying on political opponents in their yeah. own country. That's a, that's oh, yeah. a, a, that, that's different, oh, yeah. right? Than spying. Well, on and certainly point. Apple doesn't want to be a but, vector for that. That's the other thing, right? right. Exactly. That, see, that that's that's yet another chapter in this problem. That as as cell phones become so easily and tempting to to weaponize against political opponents religious opponents any kind of opponent apple's going to find themselves in these situations more and more more and more as, as time goes by what are they going to do if the indian government basically sharpens existing anti-terrorism laws saying that it is illegal to interfere with an ongoing uh, intelligence operation that's targeted against militant uh, uh, militant insurgents, militant uh, terrorists. And they use that to say, oh, by the way, Apple, you are not allowed to tell anybody if anybody inside India, or at least nobody who's on this list of people, you're not allowed to tell anybody if they if they are being tracked or or somehow hacked. Many uh, by many your phone. of us have received that warning from both Google and Apple that a nation state hacker was attempting yeah. to get into our stuff. That is that is a, a standard operating procedure for at least Google and Apple, probably Microsoft as well, right? Right. Uh, but the so, governments may <laughs> may not take kindly to that. They were using apparently Pegasus, the spyware uh, developed by the NSO group. Uh, which the NSO says we only sell to governments. So that's another <laughs> smoking gun. Um, people often ask, Leo, why do you inject politics into technology? Why do they put, uh, why do they inject politics we're not, into we're technology? Not the, we're not the ones <laughs> with not, the syringe, right? Exactly. We're not the ones with the syringe. Thank you, Andy, the for syringe that. syringe and, and the chloroform. <laughs> we're, there's somebody else. We're just, <laughs> we're just reporting, uh, not taking sides, but, but just uh, reporting. It's also further complicated by the fact that Apple really wants to do business in India, which is a giant market. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is somewhat so. similar to Apple's issues in China, where, you know, on the one hand, they're not crazy about the government, but on the other hand, they want to do business there. And, uh, but, and, yeah. and and in China, you can see the soft pedaling where Apple is is doing as much as it can. It has some certain lines that it's not going to cross related to actually getting a hold of the, the data on the phone. But in the cloud, it's fine. Um, and they kind of give where they need, where they have to give um, in those areas. But you're also seeing Apple building factories in other countries. So Apple is like, there's this slow, like, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll agree with them. But they're, they're, you, you're seeing them slowly diversify their risk. And, and that of over a decade gives them more leverage to be more assertive but they don't yeah. right now they couldn't they couldn't run their company without china so they there's a certain level of yeah. of uh of what they have to do there yeah. plus to be fair uh, china what china and, leather, and some other companies have done are asking for passive things such as you're not allowed to have vpn services uh, uh vpn software or anything that will allow you to allow yeah, citizens to, to encrypt yeah. their, their communications right as opposed but the and but if if the rubber ever met, met the road and saying that we need you to not interfere in any way with our with the power structure's ability to surveil intimidate and perhaps even cause bodily harm to people who oppose our political party or our political structure that's when a apple and any other company is going to have to really have 
really have to have a come to Jesus moment about, I'm sure I could come up with a better phrase than that, but really decide, look, who are we and what are we willing to do? If we're going to cross this line, is there any line that we're not going to cross? You call it a come to Ford moment. How about that? Come to Ford, Gerald Ford. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I mean a, he was a, a, he was a, charming as a president. It's a little callback to Brave New World. Don't worry about it. Oh, uh, man, sorry. If you were going, to, time to take a break, and I want to talk about our sponsor. But before I do that, I want to ask you: If you were going to learn another language, Andy, what language would you like to learn? Would you like to learn Russian? I bet you would like to learn Russian. <laughs> I know Svidi, enough to fake it. Vayich. Yeah. So he was not receiving his Republic of Spain. Yeah. Well, he's one like he will eat Kairos. Gavrit Moskva. <laughs> How about you, Jason? Is there a language you would like to learn? Well, I I live in California and Spanish. stupidly decided to take yes. German in high school yes. so, and college. <laughs> yes. So, yes, yeah, Spanish would be uh, more useful in my life. We had a fight sure. when my kid, uh, Abby, was little in high school. Little, and she was in high school. She was trying to decide what language to take. And I said, oh, French, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and Jennifer said, what are you talking about? She lives in California. She took French, ended up spending junior year in France. And boy, that's come in handy. <laughs> it's the, inter it's the oh, international yeah. language of diplomacy. Diplomacy. Exactly. Leo. That's right. She, whenever chess is mentioned, she knows what uh, what to, what language. Hey, to when I finally went to Germany, thirty five or forty That's years later, yeah, uh, or whatever, then yeah, it was very useful. Had you remembered? You were able to ask for the library. You remember, remember. just like yeah. that. Yeah. No Facebook. Yeah. yeah, I remember no Chinese, which is what I usefully studied in college. How about you, Alex? Is there a language? Swahili, you know, oh. like I, I know little bits of bits. I think Swahili. I, it's I know kind of a beautiful Shona language. I like it. Yeah, I do. I do I like, like the Bantu-based languages, and so yeah. I, I do like. I think that that is a very beautiful language. I think practically, I, if I learned another language, it would be Spanish, Spanish. because yeah. my wife already speaks very fluent Spanish, and so it's it, it would be fun. But I plus we keep thinking about Mexico, it. and then there's Barcelona. This is why I use Babbel. In fact, I'm learning Spanish in Babbel: Spanish, French, Italian, German, Danish, Indonesian. Dutch, Norwegian, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Swedish, Turkish. You can even learn English. Did you know that? <laughs> Which maybe some of us should do from Babbel. I love Babbel, the language learning app that actually works. I love it so much. I actually bought a lifetime uh, membership uh, because I just know that I will always be wanting to learn some language. Babbel uses quick 10-minute lessons. So it's you can do it anytime, whenever you've got a moment. And it and they're designed by language experts, 150 different language experts, so you could start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks using science-based cognitive tools, things like spaced repetition, interactive lessons. I love the conversational part of it because I really can. It's you know, it's not just learning vocabulary; it's learning how to speak to somebody, build real-world conversations, order food, ask for directions, speak to merchants, and of course, as you get better, do more. It also teaches, and I think this is really important, the context, traditions, and the culture of the language you're learning. From self-study app lessons to podcasts to, they actually have live classes as well. Babbel has, which is great, because then you're talking to real people in real time. It's such a good, useful tool. Babbel has a wide range of learning experiences for learners of all ages based on your ability to commit time or how advanced you are. 15 hours with Babbel, they say, is equal to one university semester. All of Babbel's 14 language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. And here's a special limited-time deal just for you. Right now, 55% off your Babbel subscription. But you have to do it. This is special at babbel.com slash MacBreak. B-A-B-B-E-L. Babbel.com slash MacBreak. 55% off. Some rules and restrictions apply. But I think this is a great New Year goal, right? to learn a language, especially a language that would be useful. Although maybe you want to read, you know, Proust in the original French, whatever it is, Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Mac break. I just, I just want to speak to the more than 50% of Californians who now speak Spanish. Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Mac break. Our son's studying uh, German right now, actually, uh, Jason. Did you, it's a, it's, it's an interesting language. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird, but yeah. you get well, to... Well, and I, my high school, like, that was the first year they offered German, and it was uh, like, because before that it was French or Spanish, and so it was like, ooh, let's do this exciting yeah. thing, and yeah, I don't, I mean, I enjoyed it, but um, in well, terms, in practical terms, it's stupid, yeah. and I should have learned <laughs> Spanish, because I am a, I am a lifelong Californian, and you're right, Leah, like, it is 
our other language. Yeah. Uh, and well, I don't speak it's it a bilingual it's state at this point. It is. Absolutely. Like many states, by the way, this is not unusual. Uh, there are a lot of states now who uh, are basically bilingual, and I think that's fine. I think that's great. It's mm. another culture. It's another. Uh, if you live in Maine, you should learn French. <laughs> <laughs> More Quebec French quoi. speakers in Maine mm. than yeah. any other Quebec part quoi. of the U.S. Uh, one thing yeah. I like about Babel, they do that. You can do Spanish, you know, Castilian, or you can learn uh, South, what they call South American Spanish, which is basically Mexican in South America. Espanol. They're Espanol. Instead. They're a little Castilian, Castilian versus Espanol. And so it's nice that they make the distinction. You can learn either one. They're similar enough that one would help you with the other. Um, Vision Pro, we should talk about this. Yeah. Uh, the drum beat boom, 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 is getting harder and harder and louder and louder, uh, according to Ming Chi Kuo, who, by the way, gets our Rumor Monger of the Year award. He was the guy who at the beginning of 2023 said no new iPads in 2023. And he was right. Whoa. First year since they were announced that there were no new yeah. iPads, which is kind of amazing. Um, everybody agrees chain, man. there are going to be yeah. new iPads this year. Why? Before we get to the Vision Pro, why no new iPads in 2023? Were they trying to figure out what to do with them? I think it's just time, an accident of timing. Honestly, everybody's going to do these... Uh, tea leaf reading and criminology about it but like i think it was an accident of timing that they had everything lined up in a certain way uh for the previous ones and they you know apple goes through these more than year-long cycles for the ipad i think the ipad pro i mean the real story here i think is is that that ipad pro the last generation was supposed to be the big step forward r the rumor is and instead it was just to kick the can down the road kind of thing and i think that that changed their time horizon for everything else that they were doing so We'll get them all this year instead. It's a little bit weird, but I'd say it's like a, like an eclipse or something. It's literally yeah. just a whole bunch of variables happen to leave this weird year where there are no iPad updates, except, 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 lest we forget the very exciting, not third generation, uh, not second or first generation, <laughs> but USB-C, Apple Pencil, whatever that thing is. <laughs> that was it. That was the entire That's iPad so line for the year. Weird. New Pencil. Yeah, new and, Pencil. And, they're not going to blow our minds that that and, badly and more than once a year. By the way, the rumor it's, is there will be actually a new pencil this year too, yeah. like a real new, a pencil. real like a like a pencil pro or something. Yeah, yeah. pencil pro. <laughs> well, and, and you know there there could be some integration between the Vision uh, Pro and the iPad that that you may want to have the iPad come after the Vision Pro. Ah, that's so, interesting. So the, um, that's a good. So that may be good also um, okay. possibility. There's also. I feel uh, like this is this is the year where they're gonna. I mean, I think the Pro, as somebody who is a big fan of the iPad Pro, I think this year the iPad Pro is gonna really get expensive. Uh, a nice, a nice. It's gonna. It's probably yeah. gonna get expensive. It's gonna have OLED, OLED but I think yeah. that there, it's gonna be a real substantial update, which we have been dying right. for since 2018. Really, I think the the. Um, the pro accessories are going to get an update, right? Like the Air will keep using the, the old size and it'll have the old Magic Keyboard and stuff like that. But I think they're going to turn over all the accessories on the pro line, including the pro pencil and the pro keyboard. And who knows, there may be some new features there too that are exclusive to the iPad Pro because they've, they're going to have the M3 processor. Like I'm excited about that because that's been one of the big problems with the iPad, right? It's not that the iPad isn't fine. It is fine. I love mine. But that the iPad and Pro and the iPad Air and the base level iPad, and you're like, why is that iPad Air there and what does it do? And I think the answer is going to be that the new iPad Pros will be so much further up the chain that the iPad Air will make more sense for everybody else. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued by what they could do if they decided to do a, a more explicitly creative, creator focused iPad. That it was something that's yeah. not necessarily like a, a good bridge device for a little, little bit more than a phone, a little bit less than a notebook, but saying, guess what? We're, we're, we're going to make it uh, 14 inches. You're going to get an OLED screen. You're going to get like more storage. You're going to get more connectivity. So that if you wanted to capture and edit 4K, 8K video down to 4K, you can do it here. If you want to do an entire illustration job on this thing, not simply use it as a, uh, as a, as a sketch device for something you eventually put into your desktop, that's super intriguing to me. This is going to cause a crisis, though, for me, because I would really love my, uh, my MacBook Pro, uh, and I spent a lot of money on it. Do I want to spend another, it's going to be two grand at least, right, for the yeah. uh, iPad Pro. But the I'm going to look, at, I'm, Pro yeah, I'm gonna look at that screen and go, the, the last two have oh. cost that much. And then I'm going to think, oh, well, and, and and then I yes. have to decide what platform, because you, you don't, re I have an iPad Pro. I don't really, I really use, I use it to FaceTime my mom. 
That's it. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, I, I use it a lot, but I feel like, I mean, Apple's happy to take your money, right? We all, we learned that that's why yeah, Apple has all the money is right. that they've taken all of your money <laughs> right. and everybody else's money who can Stop buy it. both. Why not both that oh. there's, you can say that in Spanish, but I'm not going to. And <laughs> so then I, I do think though that Apple is, you know, Apple had that moment where they thought, oh, the future of computing is the iPad. I don't think that they think that anymore. I think that they think the iPad is going to be good at what it's good at, which is it's modular. It can be different things to different people. And they're going to be the iPad Pro is going to fit into very specific use cases where people want and maybe need that level of power with that kind of modularity where an iPad makes sense and fits in. Whereas the Mac is a general purpose computer and it's going to remain the general purpose computer. So I think it's better if the iPad... So what I'm saying, Leo, is unless you know you need an iPad Pro, don't buy it because yeah. the people who know it will know it and it'll be worth it for them. And I will say that if if you were able to boot an iPad into Mac OS, I would oh, never, buy my dream. <laughs> yep. never buy another laptop. I'd never buy another laptop. It would be like, oh. you know, the... It's Alex. just some basic services. And the thing is, is they're, it's the same chip now. It's the same level of power. So, it's the same, like all, yeah. you, just hold, you hold down a button when you hit restart and then now it's Boot a Mac. for iPad. When I, when, when <laughs> yeah, I said but, but it would be like other be features, this yeah. is exactly yeah. what I meant, Alex, which is I wonder, and I don't know if they'll do it, but I think it's a non-zero chance of saying one of the features of this new high-end OLED iPad Pro is yeah. there's a Mac app on it. And when you tap it, it runs uh, Sonoma. Right. And it's running it like a MacBook Air, essentially, an M3 MacBook Air. Yep. And then you can leave it and, you know, maybe it only works when you attach it to a, an external keyboard or to that case. But like, I don't I don't think that would be unreasonable. And I don't think it's going to kill mm -hmm. Mac laptops. It's a very different use case, but oh, but it would me. make the, it iPad, would the iPad more useful. <laughs> like I would be yeah. like I would do it if, if you made it, if you just made the screen a little bit bigger and you and you gave me an iPad that could run it. The, the only reason I opened my Mac uh, laptop is because there are things that I can't do on can't my do. I, yeah. iPad. Yeah. And if, if you gave me the Mac stuff on the iPad, immediately I would it be solves gone. It solves it. Like, solves the, the iPad yeah. problem. Yeah. Yeah. One I, could, I, I, could, I could believe it more easily if it were... Uh, if it were only able to install Mac apps from the from the official app store and if developers had the ability to just as they can now with iPad apps click a button that says that allow this Mac app to run in Mac mode or excuse me they would, yep. they would they'd probably they'd probably flip it on its ear not saying I give I give this app permission to run but I specifically want to deny permission to make it run uh, on an iPad Which for is what whatever happens with the app if, if they I mean if they think if they think that the, their Mac app is a degraded experience for whatever reason on an iPad I think they should have the ability to do so but i think that they would never do that unless they had unless they said guess what you're absolutely locked into the app store you cannot sideload any apps we are not going to trust anything on this yeah. completely locked down platform where every sacrifice we put you through is basically to make sure that it is more stable than a mac to make sure that it is more secure sure. than a mac and the amount of pressure put on it on developers to go to the app store because th that would be basically the signal of hey Macs are going away. <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, like, like, I, like, let me swing, let's yeah. swing this. I don't I, think, I think so, but it would certainly be a great lever to get people on the Mac App Store if they did something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I, I don't think it would, I, I don't think it would get rid of like the high power ranks, but I would say that I think that the, if you did that, the amount of laptops being sold from Apple. Now, again, I think that this would no. be, no, I think no, the because, of because this thing's going to cost two grand and it's going to be a tablet with a weird uh, compatibility mode. Amazing. And most people tablet. are not going to do that. They're going to buy either oh, a more powerful man. MacBook Pro or they're going to buy a cheaper MacBook Air. I don't, I don't think it's a mainstream mm. product. What's even interesting if they let you run the Mac on it is oh. with the exception of the OLED keyboard, this, the MacBook Pro is actually roughly the same size, weight, and price as an iPad, as a potential iPad yeah. Pro. Uh, maybe a better keyboard on mm. the MacBook. Uh, Better processor, certainly a better processor, yeah, but, yeah. and more but memory having the touch and all screen, that. having the stuff, and, and better system. I'm willing to give up that for touch screen. Cameras, uh, maybe for an OLED cameras. You program and, and in Python, Python right? Jason. You there are there are programs like Pythonista. There are apps that'll let you do it. Yeah. yeah. No, I think. I mean, I get what Alex is saying. I I don't agree because I think that it's a a more. I think it fits Alex, and it might fit me. Right. Like I might not need to travel with a MacBook Air anymore if I could run Audio Hijack, which would be would require right. a level of access that Andy's theory would prevent. Right. Yeah. But yeah. if I could Ace. do that in a safe space inside an iPad, it would save me. But I think most people are are going to be like, what? 
Mac inside an iPad, huh? Yeah. And they're just going to buy a MacBook Air or they're going to yeah. buy a MacBook Pro. Yeah, but and then there'll be the weirdos, of... us sickos in the middle <laughs> saying, yay, I don't know. Mac I mean, on iPad. Great. I just think that there's a lot of people that work in marketing and work in a lot of other things that are not, like they don't need the computer to do very many things, you know, and they, they still have a laptop. I think that it would be Apple selling it as this high-end solution. So I think... You know, that's the problem. It's the price, but I guess those people can afford it. Yeah, but, but there are people who. who, who there are there people. people. Uh, yeah, these are. Uh, these are. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I yeah, interrupted. But. The, but the, I mean, this, these are Apple consumers. They will buy stuff because it attracts. Yeah. They're, they're attracted to it, or because it fills a gap that they have. Um, I. I do think that. Uh, I, I. I don't think that Apple wants to wants to confuse their market. I don't think they want to get people into a brain lock situation when they walk to an Apple store about whether they want to get an iPad or whether they want, want to get a Mac. But one thing I absolutely do think is that Apple, there are very few areas in which Apple has 100% missed the boat. And one of them is that they, they seem to not appreciate what a paradigm shift it is to not have a computing paradigm where my hands are here on a flat surface. My eyes are here on another flat surface. And there's a disconnection between the two. That the, what I love about using my iPad is that there are times when that really is the most efficient way for me to do things. And when I do that, I can even have it plugged into a desktop and it will work like a desktop. But there are times where I'm just I'm just interacting casually with data. And this is a there's a disconnect between my hands and my eyes and my brain uh, that the iPad short circuits. There are types of content that I want to consume where... 80% of what I'm looking at is completely superfluous where I want a, just a flat piece of glass that is 100% user interface without any tactile buttons on it. And I, th I think that every time that I use devices that are like that, that, are, that run on other operating systems, I'm reminded of, God, I really wish Apple had... I really wish Apple had uh, had gotten rid of its its uh, its dogma about oh no you don't want a refrigerator toaster you don't want you you, you want a truck and you want a car because they they do two separate things equally equally well I think they were blind to how well a touchscreen adding it uh, yeah. modifying the Mac OS interface so that it could work very very well as a touchscreen interface and if that although if that had happened Alex I think you would have been right that at some point Apple would have decided you know what we're <laughs> congr congratulations. We are now merging the two of them into my pad OS because we're yeah. squishing all the letters of Mac OS and iPad OS together. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I still think that there's a lot of people who lightly use their laptops that that would be perfect for the, that a that a yeah. just a, and, and I think that the best way to test that is to put something to an iPad it. out that'll run yeah. Mac Mac software and then just sure. see how what people do with it. And if it takes off, it takes off. But if it doesn't, I still think it'll sell enough to make it worth it for Apple. Um, mil, you know, millions of copies of whatever, but I don't, I, I agree that I don't know whether everyone would want to use it, but I just feel like there's a lot of people that I see, especially at the airport. And when you think about yeah. what they're doing with it, uh, they'd be pretty happy you know, with, yeah. with, with something that was a little lighter that they could actually draw on. Yeah, and I use I mean, my laptop for more heavy duty stuff. I want that M3. I want all the RAM and all that stuff. But you can still get that on the lap. You can still have that on the lap. For me, you know, the problem is it's the I'm an old dog. System. I don't want to learn new yeah, tricks exactly. like touching the freaking screen. I don't. Oh, see, that doesn't, see, that doesn't bother me. That. It's, for me, it's the file system. It's it's that when I want to. Well, that's the problem, too. A, you can't access files. Put, yeah. It's so like if I want to do a bunch of images, let's say I want to render a bunch of images on Mid Journey and I want to put them into a keynote document it's on an iOS on app, on an iOS system, that is a royal pain in the yeah, neck. That's right. <laughs> on a Mac, it's nothing. You know, and plus and that's the, the UI. The I hate to say it, but the UI on iOS uh, apps is is all over the freaking place. It is not consistent. Well, they're on the, they're that way with the Apple. Did you see the Did you see the release of the new the new Apple Apple TV OS or whatever Apple the TV yeah, that's, OS? Yeah. It well, is Apple's single handedly. Terrible. Hear me out. Hear me, it is single handedly the worst update that Apple has ever executed in the forty years that I've used an Apple product. <laughs> It is the worst. It is so bad that I, I, it, it, like it crashes. It is crash. I restart that app, um, uh, twice a day, like twice a day, so that it will do something. It doesn't crash. It just the little pain, the new little pain that they created just opens, and doesn't respond. Like it'll go up and down, but when you click on it, nothing happens. And the way to fix that is to restart the app, come back into it, and then everything. Works. I got one for you. In addition to that. Okay. In addition to that, they reorganized everything. They got rid of movies and TV, all things that worked perfectly fine before. I agree. And now they've they've What's shoved it all in. And I think that I think that they are, you know, they want to become a cable network. And and I think that it is the new app is 
one of the few times, oftentimes I think Apple really does build interfaces where the user is all that matters. We don't care about the developers. We don't care about the everyone else. We just care about the user experience. This is where this along with, I think Apple's whole push into news and TV and everything else is the place where they're giving up the, the user as the most important thing. And they're, they have a business model they're trying to build and they're funneling us into it and forcing us into something that is substandard. You know, and like, I think that the news app is a substandard because when I block something, I don't get it blocked. It just keeps showing it to me. That's that's not a user friendly thing to do. And this new, the new app that they rolled out before Christmas, it was like the worst time to roll it out. Everyone's home. So everyone's home. My kids are like, what happened to the Apple TV? You know, like it, it's broken. <laughs> it's, it's actually easier to go watch stuff on, like Amazon has a better IO, um, interface than Apple does. And that's saying a lot. Like <laughs> Amazon's, Amazon's interface is the worst one of all the bun the whole bunch. And somehow Apple achieved the illustrious uh of making a, an app that actually runs worse than Amazon's app on the, on on the <laughs> Apple TV, it is such a bad. It, it and, and it, again, it took us me took me a couple of days to figure out the little dance, which is delete the. I mean, um, force quit the app, restart it, and it'll work again. You know, and 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 it's just. It, I got but, a better on one top for of you. that. I hate the interface. I got a I better one for it. you. What is the number one uh, way people buy music? Buy not rent. Buy music. It's iTunes, right? It became the number one is digital it? music store. Yeah. So trying to, to figure buy, out how to do that. Trying oh to gosh. buy. <laughs> so, so, so Peter Gabriel's <laughs> new go, album, which go. I know you listen to, Jason, because I because I follow you and I see you. Yes. It's my absolutely. favorite new album. I just love it. And I thought, I want to. It's his first album in 21 years. I want to support Peter Gabriel by buying the album. Good what? luck trying to buy it, by the oh way, on iTunes. You, I could not. Maybe it's me. Am I stupid? There's no more store. There's no real way to buy it. They think, well, why would you want to buy it? You got it with Apple Music. And then, oh, here's another good one. Open Music. And there's a button that you can click. It's right to the left of the uh, Apple that makes it the little mini player. But what they don't show you is how to get out of the freaking mini player. And I'm clicking all over the place. There's no button on the mini player to close the mini, to, to go back to the, like, I want to go back to, there should be a, a expand, right, to go back. There isn't. I finally figured out you have to, cl if you close the mini player window, it opens the big player. Like, that's the. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Of, course, of course, that's as, completely as illogical. No, that, no well, I was I was joking about it. That's <laughs> yeah, been the behavior for years, and it doesn't make sense. What it makes these it people never think? Has made sense. Okay, you got to help me. That's I'm gonna, like. I'm That's gonna, like 20 I'm, years that I'm behavior's gonna, been there, the mini player. It's not like any other experience on on Mac OS at all. Who is designing this? I don't know. It's, I don't know. I purchased songs because um, my daughter wants to put them into Moises so that she can yeah. break them up so she can learn how to play the drums or, or, or bass right. or whatever. And um, so I so, buy them. So and walk it me is through like, this, because I am now. Can you can you pull up? I, I, have, I, I, I it requires it, qu it requires enough swearing that might fill half the row. I, mean, I, 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 I went and then I go to Amazon and they say, well, you could buy the CD. No, I don't want the CD. No, I exactly. want to buy like we used to buy <laughs> own yeah. the record. And just in, mostly because I want to give Peter Gabriel fifteen bucks. In, that's all. In Peter Gabriel's case, he has a Bandcamp <laughs> site where you can buy it, and that's where you should go. But yeah, I get. That's I take your point. It is Apple is just kind of hiding. All of that stuff. Yeah, well, they they have, I mean, that that's the thing on the latest version of Apple TV. There are still mu movies and TV shows icons, but they only open up a window that says, don't do this anymore. Go to the TV app because they're pushing yeah. everything in there. And I, I mean, I don't envy them. It is difficult to kind of like tear down one structure and build another. And certainly it's harder to support sort of like various methods of, of buying slash viewing slash renting media, but it's a mess. Yeah. Well, good. I thought it was just me. And this is the other problem when you do that, Apple, is people think you're smart. So they assume they're dumb. And oh, my God, I must be an idiot. I'm an old so man. I can't figure out how to close the minimize the player window. I can't figure out how to buy a gosh darn album. Well, and the frustrating part is, is that if you go to a song and you say, I want to buy. So if you hit the ellipse on the song, you yeah. can say show an iTunes store. Right. Yeah. In, in music, when you're in music, you can say show in the iTunes store. Okay. But it doesn't, it takes you to that artist. It doesn't take you to the song. Like it just, it just goes, here's the artist with all their stuff. And now you got to go dig through to figure out or what the, it is. And or the album, you if you select the album, yeah, it, it will take you to the album. Well, I just yeah, click the triple dot and it says the item not available. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, when you go to, when you go to the, are you in music? 
Yeah, yeah, I've got my... it in music on the Mac. I'm uh, you know to why? Because I'm seventeen ninety nine. You can buy. I'm it. on the inside mix, so they don't sell that in the U S. They right because that's the, the Dolby dark Atmos side. version. And yeah. they, why you don't they sell the that in the U S? I don't understand. I can listen. to I don't it. think they sell the Dolby Atmos because okay. that's just available on Apple so Music. I, I'm not I, sure they even support Dolby Atmos purchases. Now I don't even know what to do because that's the version. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, but why, what you're saying is you should probably buy the blue, buy the Blu-ray if you want the Dolby Atmos album. That's uh, really the only way okay. to get it. But what yeah. you are saying, which is valuable, is the three dots in this long menu that comes up, including download, add a playlist, play, and uh, right. play. Blah, 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 at the bottom says show in iTunes Store. Because yeah, there and are then three, I can buy it. There are three different worlds encompassed by the music app. Oh boy, I can't believe. I mean, I'm explaining this. This is not an endorsement. I'm just explaining what this is. There are three <laughs> different worlds. I use music every day. There is your library, which can include things from Apple Music, but also can include things that you add manually and that can sync right. if you're an Apple Music right. subscriber. There is Apple Music, which is a specific world that is everything that's on that service at the at the moment. And there is iTunes Store, which you can go to to buy things and add them to your library, but not Apple Music. But they're probably already on Apple Music. It's yeah. a it's a whole thing. Well, and if you don't use Apple Music, you. you don't see that. And, and thank and you. I didn't know about the, the three one, dots. I looked at the three dots. I just gave Peter Gabriel my eighteen yeah. bucks because it's Good. a great album. He deserves it, and he hasn't done an album in twenty one years. He's probably probably poor guy living on spam. So send, yeah, send him so. the money. Yeah, and, sure uh, right. and I hand him out. <laughs> Yep. I feel better about <laughs> so, the whole thing. Thank you. Because that was driving me crazy. Yeah. It's like, I want to buy this Well, and, and the problem is that the iTunes well, the, store doesn't exist anymore, so it's hidden inside of music, and you yeah, can't get yeah, to it yeah. unless the, the, the secret door into it is those, that ellipse at the the ellipsis at the end is the is the crazy. secret door to get to the iTunes store. Crazy. And then you don't really see how to go back to music. You just have to hit listen now well, or go back to something. And it's like, it's like this, it's because it's this hidden... So, Alex, of the thing. There, it, it's not hidden. I, it might be hidden by default, but there, it's not true. There is a front door. If you go to settings, <laughs> there, there is show iTunes, iTunes store, store and you check that box oh, and then the iTunes store is there God. like so, it has so, been so since Jason, the beginning of time. So Jason, what you're, what you're basically saying is that's not hidden. If you know to look under the under the doormat, there's a key. Yeah. <laughs> look, I, I don't know, yeah, I don't know how this turned into the lie in the witch in the wardrobe, but here we are, okay? <laughs> oh my it's gosh. It's like, you found anyway, the fish. Bottom line, <laughs> yeah, it's the Apple, of the leopard. which yeah, should be the king exactly. of interfaces. In fact, really, when the Macintosh came well, out, the interface... They don't want you to buy music yeah, exactly. anymore, right? right. Exactly. They just don't want but you to do it. if I'm an it, artist, so make it I'd hard. be pissed. Like if I were Taylor Swift or Peter Gabriel, I'd go, why are you making this so hard? This is, you're the number, maybe not anymore, but it was the number one music store in the world. Yeah. No, that's, and that's what frustrates me. And this, this is why I, I will do everything I can to make sure that I own all the music that I have because every single music service that I've used, Apple's, Spotify's, YouTube's, everything, at some point you become inconvenient to their current business plan. Yes. And they will try to it's force called you to do the, Yep. Yep. Yeah, like yep. and just not, not only that, but now Apple is like trying to create so many incentives to make sure that like uh, there, there are people who don't like Dolby Atmos, don't like like spatial audio. They think that this is not how the the music was originally prepared. It's not how it's mixed. They they a lot of people think that it's very very artificial. But now Apple is moving to incentivize every single music music publisher to remaster everything in spatial audio. So whether you want it or not, that's how you're gonna get it. So it's like it's 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 really really a bummer that look all I want to do is listen to this album that I really 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 like, and I want you to help me find albums that I really 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 like. Like and once I find it, your job is done. I will find whatever. I, I, I like the fact that I can put it on a, a hundred and forty dollars uh, digital uh, uh, Sony Walkman if I want to. I can load it on my Apple Watch if I want to. I, I'm not. I'm not subject to. Oh well, we decided that we decided to stop support for Apple Watch on this platform because of reasons. Like well, those reasons are are irrelevant. I bought this watch. I own this watch. I own this music. If you're not supporting, if the, you, you a third party company, are not going to support it. I'm gonna, not going to support your company. It's it's super super annoying. Oh, well, God, I'm signing up way, for Bandcamp, and next time I'll I'll buy it through yeah. Bandcamp. Yeah, thanks. Uh, 
It makes you feel great when you when you're buying stuff like directly from the artist. It's like it's 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 not quite as good as like uh, Venmoing someone a, a street performer uh, ten bucks and taking one of their CDs out of their cigar out of their their guitar case. But it's damn close. Well, it also I feel like uh, buying it on iTunes. Who knows how long I'll retain the license to the purchased uh, uh, album? But if I buy it on Bandcamp, I figure. I'm actually going to get a phys almost physical, a digital copy that it won't expire, right? It's well, is it co it's not it's copy no, protected, or it's, it's, it's a right. digital music file. It'll, you can back it up, and it's, it's not not DRM. You can back it up. Oh, Apple everywhere. stuff is yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, oh, yeah. look, it's only fourteen British pounds to buy it on uh, on uh, <laughs> Bandcamp. <laughs> how, how, how much money is that? <laughs> that is a. Can I say also that that is a very Peter Gabriel album cover? Oh, it's uh, so it's AI. Only, it's AI, if baby. I love it. He's he's you, leaning into if it. If you're doing if you're doing charades and you were doing Peter Gabriel, if you went <laughs> okay, I I have they would know. Uh, I'm gonna okay. You just gave me my pick of the week. I'll come back to me at the end of the show, <laughs> okay. and you'll see. This is a footnote to my pick of the week. Okay, thank you, Andy. Okay. Uh, uh, incidentally, um, is it is the Dolby mix of this the same as the spatial audio mix? Isn't that Dolby yes. also? Yes, that's the space. But it's not for sale in the US or an Apple store. It is. You can buy the blue you can buy the Blu-ray on Amazon. It's just no, I don't no, think I can play it in Apple's digital. streaming store, but I can't buy it. Yeah. I don't think Apple sells spatial audio no. on the store. That's no. not the it's it's a streaming only proposition. No. Okay. Because because follow me here, the store is in end of life mode where they never updated it. <laughs> that's anymore. really what's going on. And then they it? added spatial audio it. to yeah. their offerings yeah. and they somebody probably said, should we add spatial audio to the store? And they said, no, we're not touching the store anymore. <laughs> yeah. We don't have the contracts for that anyway. Don't worry about it. Just leave you, it the way it if is. If you so buy the uh, 22 pound CD version, you'll get a Blu-ray disc with the Dolby mix on it. It's interesting because he released this album with three mixes. Had three different mixing engineers come in. Yeah, there's a bright side mix, a dark side mix, and then there's an inside mix, which is Dolby Audio, which I think is kind of cool. Anyway, yeah, anyway, it, enough and they do that. sound, they do sound, but they all sound and completely different. Does yeah. he change the lyrics from bright side to dark side? I feel like no, it's literally a mix. I mean, he okay. there's so many tracks. He's been working on this for twenty, 20 years. Twenty that, that years. I think he just hired these people, and they're like, yeah, try it out. So the yeah. Chad Blake mix, which is the dark side mix, is yeah. really nice. That I love it. Great. He hired the best engineers. He's got the best session players. I mean, this is a it's an amazing I, album. I, I I like this album too. I was worried because he's one of my all time favorite artists, and I'm like, uh, you know, but he's an old man now, and so many old man artists when they when they put out stuff, it's like, well, it's got an orchestra and it's very quiet and <laughs> it's a very and and I heard this doing. and I'm like. Oh no! It's Peter Gabriel. Okay, yeah. good. It's good. Real, it's like Sledgehammer. It's Peter Gabriel. It's great. Except, yeah, there's some. He is an old man because it. the lyrics man. are the yes. old are like reflective life yeah. lyrics instead of I can't wait to pound you with my sledgehammer. And there's so even there's <laughs> even a song about VR on that. There album. is uh, road, road to Joy. So yes. yeah, he's yes. he's a. Uh, it's I think Olive Peter Tree. That's that guy. I think Olive Tree is also a little VR because you're you are actually. Being an olive seed. Oh no, you're right. It's all. It's, it's olive tree. It's Road to Joy is about a guy waking up from a coma. Olive tree is about a VR. <laughs> yeah, let's get this right. It's, okay. It's wild stuff. I mean, it's it's, it's wacky. Best, so yeah, it's the best. It's I a think lateral it's, change. It's I the best it. album in years. I love it. It's incredible. Yeah, a lot of these artists, you know, especially the ones that were really, you know, kind of geeky in that in that area, are really fun. It's really fun to see any of the outtakes. You know, we did a. Uh, we did a um, a thing with Peter Gabriel a couple you know years ago, and his studio is amazing. Oh, I it's bet. like this play. The two the two that I that I really want to visit are Peter Gabriel's studio and Stuart Copeland's studio. Yeah. And um, Stuart Copeland has this giant like area that he like uh, I don't know it's all, it's half museum half. Uh, but he, but that's where he composes, and he does all these. Stuart does a lot of uh, Copeland does a lot of these. Uh, um, uh, little like explaining things and jumps on people's podcasts and talks about things and. And uh, he is, uh, but the two, those two studios, you just feel like they're just kids in a candy store. They've got all the stuff that they want to do. They sit there and play with ideas and eventually come out with something. It's and, cool uh, when somebody has unlimited money yeah. and, and is kind of geeky and is interested in the technology, like those guys, yeah. uh, what they yeah. can do. It is a disadvantage for Peter Gabriel because he couldn't stop mixing this album <laughs> for 20 years. But he has the luxury. He has the luxury. <laughs> the royalties like, are really, I want to really, really wonderful thing. You know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, he's apparently got hundreds of songs that are in various states of completion. And yeah. I wonder if, if this is his way because because he released a new track in a very modern way this is an older artist but a very modern way he released a new track every full moon for the entire year of 2023 so cool. So cool. and and 
I mean, as somebody, Andy can Andy can relate to this. Uh, deadlines, I, I, we know, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, Douglas Adams himself, enjoys the he? whooshing sound. Yeah. He found a, a structure that worked for yeah. him, which is I'm going to release a new track finished in album track order yeah. every full moon until the end of the year, and then the album will come out. And by December gum, after 21 years, yep. he did it. It was so amazing. That's all it was for like, him. him just deciding, I, I only have so much more time to put all yeah, these. All I got to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's in so, his seventies. Uh, he, uh, he said. I guess you know. You know when time. when Prince when Prince passed, I think that they said he had a thousand songs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Prince did the same thing. He had of, just he has this giant vault. Yeah, yeah. those uh, are and those are gradually coming out. One of my favorite artists, Bob Mould, has said that um, he's got like hundreds of songs that are just in the archive, and he said it's my retirement fund. Essentially, like when I'm done, <laughs> I can just put those out, and I you know the music keeps happening even though I'm I'm done. I I hung it up. <laughs> I can't hear anymore. Well, speaking of the music uh, continuing to happen, we're going to get to the, we are going to get to the Vision Pro in just a moment as we continue with Mac Break Weekly. Jason Snell, Andy Anako, Alex Lindsay. It's nice to nice to start a in new year with you guys. It's good. good to be back. Back at you. Yeah, yeah twenty twenty four. Absolutely. Wow. I never thought I'd I'd be around to see it. It is the future. <laughs> I mean, look at we're going to be talking about AI this year. I think. Like crazy, what AI and VR yeah. helmets just all yeah. the way down. Yeah, no, and not both. VR helmets. <laughs> you watch. Okay, so VR helmets. Let's talk about them. January twenty seventh. One rumor monger says will be the release of the Vision Pro. Yes. Uh, I love that that um, that Apple Insider referred to it as a sketchy rumor while also reporting, <laughs> reporting on it. it. Perfect. <laughs> that is that is master, it's from the investor, uh, the Chinese investor moment. website Wall Street Insights. Uh, more, okay. more, and this is how we started ten minutes ago uh, talking about it. Ming Chi Kuo, who did nail his prediction for 2023, there'll be new new iPads. Says the Vision Pro is currently in mass production and will begin mass shipments in the first week of January 2024. That's right now. Vision Pro will most likely hit the store shelves late January or early February based on the current mass shipment schedule. So when he says mass shipments, that means to stores or does it mean just to our shores? What is what does he mean get by that? Stores. In stores. stores. Gonna, so the stores are starting store. to you have stores, get boxes. You have training, you have, yeah. you know, like they're, they're, they're still doing training on it. And um, yes, because this is going to be a hard yeah, purchase. You're going to have to go into an Apple store and get fitted and measured. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to have to look at the size week, of your wallet and they're going to have to really get into yeah, it. Yeah. Measure that. I think the next week or two, they're bringing all the people from the retail yeah. out into Cupertino to do the very specific intensive training. And then they all get sent back wow. to their home stores to uh, inculcate all the rest of the people at Will it Apple be one or two people so from each happening. store, you think? Big, what it's, you, I think what it's one hearing? person from every store. Wow. I think something like that. That's going to be expensive. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think the, the day's in and Cupertino sure that has that many rooms. I don't know where you're going to put all those people. <laughs> but that, well, I'm I, sure that this was part I, of this was calculated into the cost of those headsets. Oh, yeah, that's where yeah. the 3500 you know, They're go. operational. Yeah. They're, I'm sure that they thought they thought about it. Yeah, yeah, and they don't want... I think what they, it also shows is that they have a very particular idea of how this is going to go and and doing like remote training to random people on the other end of a line, it, they were like, we're not right. going to do it that way. We're going to... We yeah, need yeah, them we here need them in here. boot camp. Yeah. And Especially, then they can spread the word. So your your uh, sources say that boot camp is ongoing right now. I think it's uh it's either this week and next week or next week and the week after. Okay. But I, I I've heard Germans reported this too. It's a couple yeah. of weeks wow. where they're bringing everybody in, week or two, um and and yeah, that's that's it's real. And that I think that lends credence again. Sketchy rumors aside, it would not be surprising at all. If there's an Apple announcement, you know, whether it's an event or just an announcement or some embargoed stuff or whatever, but like we're looking at the end of the month with things on sale, maybe even as soon as like the 26th. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's pretty impressive. When Remember when they announced it, they, as usual, they're not going to give an, an actual release date when they first unveil it, but they said early, uh, early 2024. And I think that it was rational to think, okay, March at the earliest, maybe April, maybe as late as June. Uh, they wouldn't get they wouldn't get around they wouldn't get away with anything later than the first week of June. I was not expecting last week of January to be on the table. I'm still I'm still betting on early February, but I would not have put money on February. That they must have really had their ducks in a row on this for an early state. German must, must must have been on a, at a very high level of completion. You imagine uh, at the when they were giving out those first demos. So German's uh, newsletter from December 10th, which I must have 
you know, he, he always does this. He kind of buries the lead. So the headline is Apple's working on cleaning up its confusing iPad lineup. And then way, 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 way down here, he says the seminars for uh, Apple employees are getting scheduled. Now training is set to begin in the middle of January. Each employee will be trained for two days, I'm told. Yeah. And you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to do all that training and not release pretty soon after that because I'll forget everything. <laughs> so right. You really need to. <laughs> so so we can tell if they're doing the training, uh, it's probably weeks away before they before they're before they're going to be trying to get fit people with. Uh, the I have a rumor. I heard that Apple's designing a specially designed Apple caliper to measure the thickness of your wallet as you come into the uh -huh. store, <laughs> so that they even know whether to spend any energy with you. I have a Costanza, so I'm ready. It's not. I I, I have another rumor that they don't have to do that anymore because it's now contactless. They have actually just tap you they tap you and, feel lighter and they and from that they know how much you're worth can i yeah. by the way just completely peripherally mention how many times over the holidays i've used the uh, line up the iphones and send stuff over technique that is a that's ios 17 that's a nice yeah. feature contacts yeah that just like yeah. like a touch lisa's lisa takes some pictures she says come here and she just taps my phone with it head to head and then goes woo. it does a little effect and, woo, and then bubble. it comes the bubble yeah. it's so nice that's a i mean simple things I'm taking things man. and making them making them physical instead yeah. of abstract in software is smart. powerful. So like smart. it's really powerful. Yeah. So uh, Vision Pro probably looks like in the next month, right? Yes. Yeah. So, Will they do an event? They can do video. I, I I think they I think they won't do an event proper, but they will do a lot of video and they'll have a timed release with different people who've tried it and right. Like they might do an event, but I think it's more likely that they won't like call an event so much as, yeah. as roll out, do a big like roll out with videos and embargoes and stuff. Yeah. I think the big deal, the big, the big deal here is that it is an experiential product. They can't sell it by showing you a video. They can only show it off by having people who had it for two weeks explain. And then I played back the video of my child in December <laughs> and seen it already mama, did that by it, the way my mama was just yeah I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not making fun of that I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm making it that was actually very very effective that when people start to think that no this is not just like oh well this is a gadgety uh, gadgety uh, successor to, to an iPhone it's like no this is something that's completely new I have to explain to you how this made me feel and my, what my reactions were as I were using this uh, I think that that's gonna yeah. show that's I mean as, as many we're, we're used to the idea of oh i guess apple released a new a new color of iphone because suddenly in my youtube feed like there are 11 videos saying hey i've got the new purple but not quite as pink as the other purple iphone hey let me run it through its paces it's you're going to see like 40 of those covering every possible audience and demographic of people who not just didn't just get like a three hour demo and some time on the Apple campus, like to, to do their own stand up, but someone who was able to say, I've created content with this. I've done productivity stuff with this. Here's the apps that I were able to use with this. And here is how it transformed how I think about computing. Are people being yeah. invited back uh, still to, to review or look at journalists? I mean, Jason, have, have you had a, another shot at it or is it only? I haven't June? heard anything. That doesn't okay. necessarily mean anything. I know that they've done, they did a couple of those things with spatial video, but they seem to have done those rounds now. I would imagine that that's because the holidays and also because now at this point, they've got to be gearing up for however they're going to release this. Yeah. My guess is they've got a handpicked group of people that they are working on with this or will be working on shortly. And then those will be their sort of like influencers and embargo drops and there'll be writers and there'll be YouTubers and they'll presumably have even like built a, some sort of a capture stack or something where they can... Sure. That how how right because think about this apple like i remember when the iphone came out we couldn't take screenshots of it and mm -hmm. and we ended yeah. up having to jailbreak it and then every time we wanted to screenshot we positioned that. it in a certain yeah. way and then we were we were actually via a wire telneted into the jailbroken right we were on a serial connection <laughs> and we would run a command line command that would grab the image and send it back to the mag it was ridiculous right well think about the vision pro if you're doing video or even if you're doing text and you want photographs, how do you do capture on it? And then think about, well, App Apple's presumably going to build the software for that. And Apple's going to want to have it be the nicest looking 
that it possibly can. So what does that look like and how do they present that to people? All of that is kind of like yet to be determined, but I would imagine that'll all be happening in the next couple of weeks with whoever yeah. is the first set to get that access. And, and then I, and then, the, you know, it'll, there'll be other waves and, you know, and, and people who will get it after the, after the fact. And, and you know, and, uh, and there's probably a lot more partners, a lot more content, a lot more apps, a lot more things. I, I think Apple kept a lot of powder dry. And yeah. so there's a, there's, this is, you know, what we've seen so far and gone, uh, maybe that's going to work. Um, I think Apple's going to want to put a lot of, a lot more ground on it. We're going to see, you know, what Excel looks like in it or what, you know, like, you know, like all those things um, are going to be things that they, that they pop up and they're, they're going to want to show you that there's all right. these different things. And even the things that, of, of the people that I've talked to that have had the headset on, Jason can probably talk more to this. There's a lot of things that seem very basic that are actually pretty impressive when you see them in that space. And I think they're going to want to show all those things and show how, you know, you can design, I have no idea if they're going to do this or not, but show how they, if you can, what's going to come at some point, because <laughs> you're going to put that headset on and put objects in your, you know, in your, you know, uh, around you, redesign things around you, um, you know, see things, go places, and they've talked a little bit about that, but I think that there, there's going to be a lot more, um, you know, they have been building content for this headset solidly for five years. So there's, you know, there's a lot for them to show, like, you know, they've been funding projects for five years, you know, so, so there's a lot that, 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 that they haven't shown us yet. So it'll be really What will be the killer here. app, do you think? What's the, what's the thing that's going to, or is it going to be different for uh, everybody? I think it's going to be, I think that they don't know. I think, I think that they, yeah, they know that yeah. there's there's a lot of things that 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 could be. I mean, I, I don't think anyone, when, in my opinion, still the one that made me the most impressed about VR. I've talked about this before, but it was Robo Recall, just because it was so immersive. Like you were doing something inside of the, med, the Oculus headset, and you just forgot about being somewhere else. Like you were just there, and you were getting a good workout, and you were doing a bunch of things, and you didn't think about it. I don't know what that is for Apple. I think that there are. You know, there's so many educational opportunities of taking you places and doing things, interacting. I think that there's a lot around learning how to do things that you're going to interact with with your hands. Um, I do think that there'll be a certain amount of content. I mean, we a lot of us did a lot of work on figuring out how to shoot 3D. This is where it actually is useful: is headsets, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. because stereo, you know, suddenly looks really good. Um, you know, when you when you have a headset, much better than almost any other viewing solution. So I think that you will see more, and I think Apple has we've seen behind the scenes of what looks like either red cameras or Canon cameras hidden inside of a blimp, what we call a blimp, which reduces their sound. Apple's been shooting behind the scenes at their, when they're shooting TV shows for a while. I don't expect the whole scenes or the whole shows to be in, in vision, but being able to take you in, I think there's going to be a, I, I'd be surprised if Apple hasn't been pretty aggressively pushing this, at least on their own shows, those extra features that come with your movies, imagine extra features where you get to sit on the set and look around and watch the, you know, watch what it took to shoot. Um, you know, like there was a, I was watching the, the um, secret life of Walter Mitty last night. We watched that. It's a great movie, by the way. I love that movie. Anyway, um, they had this whole Walter Matthau was in the, that. The, the, the first the first one or Mitty. the Ben Affleck the, the, yeah, ben, yeah. Uh, Stiller uh, the ben Stiller one. one. I like the Stiller one. Okay. I know okay. some people really say okay. that the other <laughs> one's better, but but anyway, so but but the Ben Stiller one is really good. And and the <laughs> it's a long discussion in after hours about this morning. <laughs> so anyway, so the um um but uh, the um uh there was a whole behind the scenes of how they did the skate. There's a skateboard scene. And how they did the skateboard scene. And I was like, I was thinking about it, watching the behind the scenes of, wow, that would be impressive. Like if you could sit there and sit on the truck and sit behind the thing and even be sitting, you know, you, you know, and, and see what it was like for the whole crew to be there. I would be very surprised if we don't see, because they have Apple TV and they have all that content. I'd be very surprised if we don't see a ton of, uh, um, of behind the scenes footage. I think that's going to be not a killer app, but it's going to definitely be something compelling for did a lot of people to have it. Did James yeah, Thurber I, have a skateboard? Was Were skateboards? I don't, <laughs> I don't remember different, that. It's a different in the movie. Book. It was an update. It was, it was a different movie. It was oh, not, it's, it's yeah. not the same. It wasn't, even, it wasn't even related to the it was story. Based, he's yeah. he's <laughs> searching, for yeah. Sa searching for Sean Penn is, was, was, was that entire version of the movie. <laughs> I, I think it was Sean Penn's yeah. greatest, best performance ever. Oh, <laughs> I, no, I have to watch it. Very short.
I think I think you're I think you're right though. I think that this is going to be not like the Apple Watch launch or even the iPhone launch. I think it's going to be like the iPad launch, where they were very very careful to not lock in a, a preconception of this device in people's minds. Uh, if anything, they're the the they spent more time less time saying what it was than making sure you didn't think that this is going to be uh, this is this is not a this is not a, a uh, this is not a laptop. This is not uh, even a Windows tablet. This is something that it is of its own and so that's why the the messaging that they choose for this is going to be is going to tell a lot about what they think about this i mean i at early, i was surprised that they spoke so much about gaming on this device because before the announcement i would have bet money that they're not going to say that this is not a gaming device that this is not for entertainment it is, it is for experiences but i think that they'll they i would have thought that they would have thought that we have to sell the point that this is you've seen gaming on vr headsets that costs eight hundred dollars seven hundred dollars even four hundred dollars this is not that this is has way more ambitions than just uh beat saber and other really fun games that people enjoy this is, has many more applications than simply having an immersive entertainment experience this is actually going to change how you interact with your daily life this is going to improve this is going to create opportunities and solve problems not just divert you and distract you from your daily life so i'm i'm keen to see exactly how how lukewarm they they set the temperature of the demo or if they really go for it and say here are here are eight different things this does incredibly and this is and subtly we're going to do we're subtly so we're going to justify the thirty five hundred dollars we're charging for this but the, the but the last thing is this this is they are only making about the last estimate I, I saw was that they have the capability of making about 500,000 of these in the first yeah. year. They, they definitely have, they definitely can sell all they can make. So it's not as though they have to worry about this, about this, and, them turning up like that temp, for a hundred dollars at value and, village in three months or anything like that. And I think they'll be able to shoot. Make, I, I think that the, the difficulty of making this headset, they'll sell all they can make for years. Like it, it is, you know, it'll be a m more the next year, more the next year. But by the time they get to the next version, which is, rumored to be 2026 or 2027, they will still be selling all the ones that they're making. It's just that it's a hard thing to make, you know, as they, yeah. as they go down that path. And, and so um, I, I will say that for the folks that have them, it's going to be like everybody who was there at 5 a.m. on whatever day they're releasing it, <laughs> between 5 and 5.10, they're going to sell a year supply. Of these of these heads that's like no, you're gonna have gonna to go like, every day gone. until finally you're first in line and you can yeah. you've waited yeah. out the rest i think so for me number one thing is when we tried this all in june um there was this feeling of like i'm sure they're holding something back and we oh, yeah. haven't through any of the developer iterations that we've seen we haven't seen anything really new so the question is is there something that they've held back i i feel like there must be that it, it, it's sort of like, that's not ready to show and we're going to introduce that and explain the concept. But it's possible that what we see is what we got. And 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 that'll be it. So that's something to watch. In terms of, Leo, your original question of, you know, I, I feel like it's a little bit throwing the dartboard because nobody knows what the killer app is. But I have two guesses. One of them is what Alex said, which is, I wonder if the entertainment aspect, especially the 3D video is going to create a little I imagine there will be a blog post somewhere that'll be like you should just buy a vision pro for the 3d movies right I'm, I'm sure somebody will write that they could start writing it now they probably already wrote it last june <laughs> but i think that i think that it is possible as somebody who has experienced 3d movies in like the meta quest like it's a better experience than it ever was on a TV yeah. or in a movie theater. And I think that there, it, there is some power there, whether it's your home movies or whether it's also just all the Hollywood movies that are done in 3d these days. And presumably a lot of Apple TV shows will also be brought over. And, and then we can talk about sports immersion as a possibility sometime in the next year where they'll experiment with that. So that's my guess. Number one. And honestly, my guess number two is the, the virtual screen productivity stuff, because I can also imagine, if they do it right, people saying, oh, you know, I only travel with the Vision Pro and I get the big display wherever I want to go because I just put the Vision Pro on and then put my laptop on the table and I've got a giant screen in front of me. I'm Apple. Here's the here's the reason I say this, because I'm skeptical of the idea of doing productive work on a Vision Pro. But the fact that Apple talked about it so much leads me to believe that they have done that inside and they think there's something there. And that means 
that for some people, there's probably something there. I don't know if that's going to be like buy this $3,500 headset. You could buy a lot of monitors for that. You could <laughs> rent a lot of monitors in cities that you're visiting and have them shipped to the hotel and then taken back by a, uh, by a person that you pay, like an <laughs> Uber driver who comes. Like you could spend a lot of money on portable monitors and temporary monitor setups before you would get to the uh, to cost of the Vision Pro. But I do, I do think that they are not, you know, making that up. I think there are people inside Apple who are like, yes, this absolutely is a okay. different kind of productivity. Tool. I'll give so you we'll the see. alternate point of view, which is they spent is. 10 Here years and a hundred billion dollars developing this thing. And Tim Cook has said, has sent out a memo saying, you will push this son of a bitch <laughs> and, it, and you will do everything you can to make it a success. It's just that they are in so deep that they are, you yeah. know, they pushed all their chips yeah. in. And I, I get and they it, but productivity is such now. a weird choice. Productivity yeah. is such a weird well, choice. But, but I, tell you, I, was, I was surprised. I was talking to a YouTube creator who uh, he goes, oh, well, I edit on the road in my in my Meta Quest. And I was like, you edit on the oh, Quest? He goes, yeah, because I got three monitors. And I was like, he goes, I can't carry that. I can't take the three monitors on the on the thing. And he was like, that's how I do it. That's how I do all of those things. Okay. And for me, it was kind of like, is the resolution high enough? Like, I was like, I don't even think that would, it couldn't yeah. work in my head. He's like, no, I, used to, I do it every day. Like, yeah. I was just like, that's crazy. So, well, that's, you know, I if, mean, if the resolution's you know, high enough, it's possible. Hey, anything you know, for just, views. That's what I say. Right. He doesn't know. He never talks about it online. <laughs> oh, okay, he never, right. it was literally, it, 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 he doesn't, the, 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 there's nothing on his YouTube channel that has to do with the, how he edits. It is, you know, it's, it's other, yeah. it's other subject matter. And, and so, but it's wow. just how it, it was just a behind the scenes, like talking, I was talking to him about yeah. workflow and he was, we, we do, we do have to say one thing before we, before we abandon this though, that we're still, this is all, this is still predicated on the assumption that Apple has done something to fix the problem of not being able to wear one of these things for X number of hours. And like what, what is, what is going to be the saturation point? What is going to be the tolerance point for a lot of devices? It real for a lot of people, it really is a half hour to 40 minutes for some people. It's going to be a couple of hours before they're like, I got to get this off my face. Uh, the, there's, there's the, 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 there are problems about eye strain that are just endemic to how the human vision system, uh, handles focus between, between two set, two opposing sets of muscles inside your eyes. And Apple hasn't said anything about how they fix that, whether that's going to make this an insolvable problem or whether Apple has done things to mitigate it is, has yet to be seen. So there's so many wonderful things that we are not going to know until lots and lots of people have, uh, have these things. And these people are not in any way beholden to Apple to, uh, I want, I want to make sure I say this correctly, that when you're looking at a pre-release product six months in advance, you, you, I think it's correct to be gentle and kind because this is by no means for, uh, final hardware or software. In a couple months time, journalists and just regular people who's paid $3,500 for this are going to be able to say, this is what Apple has shipped. This is what Apple is selling as a finished product. I have returned mine because I just can't bear it. It's, it's fine yep. for watching a movie as so long as it's long, less than 90 minutes. After that, the weight is too much or the heat is too much or just my eyes just get so burned out by uh, by by virtual reality that I have to take it off. I would love I would love for this to be a productivity device, but whereas I can do four hours of work on my phone if I have to, I can't stay immersed in this in this environment for more than ninety minutes at a time, and so I don't really use it that way. And I think it'll depend on the person. I mean, I think like sure. I I got an X reel. Uh, I don't know, it's like a three hundred dollar like little headset for my that I can hook my iPad into. And when I had COVID, I just laid on the bed and watched movie one after the. <laughs> I, just, I was I was up in my room and I couldn't go anywhere. I was like, and I just had a big screen in front of me. I watched Mission Impossible. I watched a bunch of other things, and it was, you know, it's it, and it was it was. I was surprised because I've never sat there with a headset on that long, and you know, like I probably with a couple breaks, I was there. I was in there for like six hours watching mm -hmm. movies because I, I couldn't go to sleep, couldn't get up, couldn't yeah. do anything. So. Of course, one of the differences is that when you're watching a movie, you're not you're not changing your depth of depth of focus uh, or perceived depth of focus. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at yep. a flat plane. There are things, there are, I'm not I'm not denigrating what Apple's doing or other people's experiences. I'm saying that there are things that until we have thousands of people using this, we're not going to know whether Apple has given well, I don't think, given us to giving something that's very pre-release or whether they've actually solved a problem. I don't think we're going to know for five years because I don't think Apple's going to stop pushing down on that pedal. Like I, I think that it's, well, this yeah, is but, not some like they're, they're not Google. They're not going to do this for two years and leave. 
they're gonna they're gonna press down on this and they're gonna they're gonna hold that that once when this gets comes out the gate, Apple's gonna put the pedal to the metal and they're gonna leave it there for five years. And so we'll just have to see what that looks like. But I don't this is not like a minor commitment of let's this isn't well, a hobby like the Apple TV. Yeah. This is like they're gonna this is the next iPhone to them. And so so we'll see how how that looks. Well, but I, I think that you'll see it. I'm sorry. They're go gonna keep working the they're gonna keep working this solution for quite some time. Yeah. Um, you know. I, 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 I totally agree with that. However, we have to judge this product as an actual released commercial product. We can't sure. simply say, we, I think if, if, if I'm writing a review of this if, if, and I don't like it, I will somewhere near the end, I will say, well, of course, this is just the first version of this. And I'm sure that in years time, they're going to continue to work with us because Apple and I'll basically steal everything you said because I agree with everything you said. But we have to base we have to basically say if this is uncomfortable to wear, if they haven't created a good use case for this, if like the Apple TV, which they did launch with a great amount of fanfare and a great amount of, oh, well, now we're bringing, we're solving problems just like we solve problems for with iTunes. We're solving problems with how people watch TV. And then it turned out that whatever they put out there was not as exciting to people as a basic Netflix box, as a basic Roku box. And they said, okay, we're not going to, we're not going to basically treat this. We're, we're going to treat this as a sensible product that we're going to continue to build and iterate on and support. We're not necessarily convinced now that we're going to be revolutionizing anything so much as being an active and valuable player in a, comp in a competitive market. So this is, and that could certainly, that could certainly could be the future uh, of vision pro as well. It could be something that, okay, we didn't solve any problems. We didn't really, uh, strike a chord with a market that was yearning for this device. However, we're going to be selling enough of these to continue developing of, of this. And as there, it, it just seems to be, there's going to be a market in five years where there's going to have to be two or three or four different platforms, two or three or four different price points, two or three or four different approaches to what a virtual reality, augmented reality gear is. And Apple will simply have a very valuable and reasonable position among those three or four other players. Well, we'll see. Yeah. I think one thing we know for sure is that there'll be a major ad blitz starting <laughs> yes. in the next few weeks. Uh, Super some, Bowl! Oh, my Super God. Bowl, it's going to be a big Super a, Bowl, 1984 month. style Super oh, Bowl man. ad I mean, for sure. You talk about, Andy talks about the reviews here, and I, I just wanted to say I can tell you what the reviews are almost all, entirely going to be right now, which is it is an interesting first attempt that has a lot of potential, but it costs too much money. And so should you, you, viewer, listener, reader, whatever, buy one now? No, but it's interesting to look at where this might be in the future. Most people will say that, right? Because it's a 1.0 product that costs $3,500 to start. And so it's unlikely that anybody except people who are at the deep cutting edge would ever be the yes it's right for you of a product like this and i think that's okay because as alex pointed out they can only sell half a million of them and i think it's unlikely there'll be a story where it's like wow apple can't even give these things away uh, with the limited supply i think people will buy them enough for apple to keep exploring this and i think it's going to probably take a few years unless it's a real flop i think it's going to take a few years for it to be clear like has it found its way or not? But I think a lot of the reviews out of the gate will will simply be, you know, this isn't for regular people yet because it's totally not for regular people yet. It costs too much. No matter how cutting edge it is, most regular people are not going to get out of it what they get into it. And even if it succeeds wildly, I think that might be the case. And that's okay. I don't think that makes it a failure. I just think that that's the truth of well, anything that's priced like this, that's this cutting edge, like back to first generations of all sorts of other tech where it was like, this is the future. Maybe we can debate that, but it's not the present yet. It's your chance to buy in at a high price to the future. That's a different story. This... This is the 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 two the three GS. Three G you know, three is, GS. Yeah. Three GS. This was the one. This is the one that I made that little video about saying Apple's you know, going to turn your phone into a into a video camera, and this is this is like this is was it was not the future when it came out. You know, like this was like we were excited about it, but there was you know within a couple versions. By this version, we started it started to pick up speed, but the first version people were talking about it not not going very far. The other thing is is that I think that I, I do think that. There's a lot of cars that are a horrible waste of money that are a lot more expensive than $3,500 that people buy, <laughs> you know, and, I, and, they, and they buy a fair number of them. I think that it's going gonna, it's gonna to sell well. And I think that a lot of people say, well, no one's going to develop for it for, because there's only 500,000 people. But these are 500,000 people that paid $3,500 for something and want to play on, play on it. I think that unless you're selling more than 10,000 units of your software, 
Um, you know, I think you're probably, you know, there's probably going to be a fair number of developers that want to build ideas. This is the time to build the ideas. This is the time oh. to, you know, jump into that. So I think there's oh, going to be yeah. a mad rush of people putting those things in. And I think that, I do think that the thing will be really interesting is to see how all the products that Apple has been building fit together because that 3D view of your, from your phones is going to, the 3D view that they give you behind the scenes is also going to help drive people to use the phones as a 3D as a 3D recording device, which has already been built into it. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of bits and pieces. There's how you know, all the developer tools that were built towards this, the photogrammetry tools that are on your phone. The you know, there's a lot of things that are already you know that they've done. They've, it's it is it'll be epic if it fails. You know, five years from now, <laughs> if they because I have never seen an on ramp for a product built over so many years so meticulously as I have with this product. So if this product fails five years from now, I mean, it's, it'll be, it's, it'll be an epic, it'll be, there'll be a lot of books written about it because it's, <laughs> it, there's a, because it's, it's, a, it's amazing. Like it's nothing like the ramp for, I mean, the ramp for the iPhone or the watch or the iPad were almost no ramp at all compared to what they've done for this product. And so it'll be really interesting to see, you know, uh, you know, what happens next. That's for sure. I wish we could, uh, I don't know, make a small wager. <laughs> the question is, what but I don't you know what, the, on the what you would measure. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, I know they'll measure? sell out. You're absolutely right. They'll sell out. For years. For years. I, I'll, I'll argue yeah, that they'll sell right. out for the first three years. But that's years, more a measure. Every one that they can make. Yeah, I mean, half a million is not a major It'll be more the following year and more the following year. Yeah, but, but that's, still but that's their own supply constraints are not really a measure of success. Right. Um, no, I mean, the, the early signs will be, you know, we'll have to look at like developer response and how they like the platform. And they'll be listening to the people yeah. who are the tastemakers, the influencers and the journalists, I think will have some effect on the perception of the product and so how hard apple spins it and how many times they come back with oh here's a new feature right might show you how they're it, like tip their hand a little bit about how they think it's going but it's going to be really hard beyond some some of that stuff we're all going to be reading the tea leaves for a while in terms of how's it really going here one, one thing for sure i i if anybody is a halfway valid uh, uh, apple developer they are scrambling to get something interesting into the app store at point of, at, at the day of launch because another thing about the about that phone you held up is that remember the early the early iphones when the app when the app store first opened you could become a millionaire with a flashlight app with a with a with a fart noise generator app because people were just so hungry for wow you mean that i can you i can get apps that weren't built into my phone what's out there that's and the big the and, and so and so the people who create like little doodaddy apps that just look really interesting and are the right price they're going to make their entire they're, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna make their entire mortgage probably in about two months uh if they if they strike gold there I, I Anthony family. nielsen and uh our uh who's one of our staff or one of our best staffers ai guy and, and and vr guy says it's they're gonna have a problem because without the games they're not going to sell to the existing vr audience this is they're not going after the meta quest audience meta doesn't want to go after that audience <laughs> yeah meta may not want to build it that's why they're no pushing productivity like, right because uh yeah. which to me to me is the, the is the longer shot i mean who wants to do microsoft word in a vr helmet that doesn't sound very appealing so I think they'd like to push games. By the way, that was one of the big stories while we were gone is Apple's Apple's getting I, into gaming. I don't I think that you don't have to push games. Like I think the games will happen on the on the headset without any push at all. Like they're just going to happen because it's a very it's a very natural connection. So I think that they're like, well, let's not make it all about games. We don't want to yeah. get pushed into that. So sure. I think that you don't give it any you don't give it any oxygen because it'll do its own thing. Like games will appear on the on the um on the headset no matter what. What you want to do is be pushing the energy towards all the other things that the headset can do if you're going to spend money on marketing and time and everything. So here's another question from, uh, we're ta I'm talking to the Discord, uh, Scooter X in the Discord. He says, well, it's not VR, it's AR. Um, I mean, it, it's it's mixed, it right? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Kind of. But are people, is the market going to see it that way? And are they going to see a difference, I guess? Is there going to be a point to the augmented reality features of these things? 
Oh, like, I think there will be on the on the. I mean, no, no, I'm saying on, on this first version of hardware, if you can't go outside with it, if it can't if it can't compete with uh, with uh, with sunlight, if you can't have a thing where you are actually feel as though you're absolutely connected with the environment around you, and you're not using a captain video sort of uh, expression towards the people around you, if they can see your actual face and not just a cartoon version of what the device thinks your eyes look like, I'm. I, uh, I'm i not necessarily skeptical, but I need to see how that actually plays out before I think of the augmented reality features of this as anything more than a, okay, that's nice. It does have some sort of AR, but I can't consider, I, it, I have to be convinced that this is an augmented reality device and not primarily a virtual reality it, device. It doesn't. Um, it depends on how you define augmented reality. Because if you're talking about interacting with other people and all of that, that and going outside, then it's it, it, that's a very different thing. I think it is telling, though, that Apple has decided that the default view of this is with the camera, not in a black right. space or a virtual right. environment or on a spaceship, but in your space with the cameras showing you what's around you. And, and you're and speaking, you place we, should, items we should point out as the, the only space. person here who's used it. So you you yeah. know exactly what that experience is so, like. So think of it as your desktop, right? What is your desktop? And, and Andy, this doesn't answer the question of is it really AR or not, but I will say it's interesting to me that Apple has decided, unlike Meta, for example, has decided that by default you are putting things in virtual things in the world around you and not closing yourself off in a virtual space. Now you can do it. And with meta, you can do it the other way. Now that their cameras are better, that that will be <laughs> right. That's part of the issue is like the, the quest two, it was an add on quest three was built knowing with better cameras, knowing that they have a pass through mode, but like Apple, Apple, the pass through mode is the primary. And that means to me, at least that means that Apple thinks of it as primarily an augmented reality device with a virtual reality option, but it depends on what you mean by it, right? And if you define sure. it in a more, in, in, a, in a tighter way, but I do think it is at least meaningful that Apple by default expects you to interact with objects in real space, not, you know, basically like you can't move because, and, and you've got to clear out your furniture, right? Because <laughs> right. otherwise you'll stumble on it if it's a purely virtual space. Yeah, I, I'm still. That's another area in which I'm. I'm. I will say I'm actively skeptical. This is for Apple. Is is I think definitely one of the most humanistic companies out there. Where they always think about we. I we want we. If anything, we want to get you to use our phones less. We want you to. Use, we want you to use a watch when you don't have to have uh, have your attention diverted by a screen. All this sort of stuff. And I think that one of the, on the long list of things that any really successful device like this has to solve, it's how do you solve the problem that this is a fundamentally by design isolationist device where yes, maybe you can see through video, maybe through excellent 4K per eye video, uh, people uh, people around you, but they're still looking at you wearing these dumb ski goggles with, again, cartoon eyes looking back at them. You can watch uh, 3D movies and even uh, regular 2D movies in a, in a glorious way, but you can't sit on a sofa and enjoy that experience with three or four people in your family with you unless you buy all of them through these $3,500 headsets. You can do conferencing, but they can't show you can't show your actual self when you're conversing with people. You can only show a virtual a virtualized version of yourself and you will never have that sort of two-way interactivity it's uh, there's there are a lot of things that are unknowable at this point and that's one of the things i'm most concerned about that they've created something that by definition cuts you off from everybody around you and it, it will there are little cracks in the in the bricks you can there's some there's some daylight and fresh air coming that cracks through that but by nature you are inside your own little space your own little room and you have a technology that is allowing other parts of these to creep in this is why i think that augmented reality is the best kind is where there is you're looking through clearer glasses you are seeing the actual world around you with no filters it just gets to enhance and throw other things into that field of vision if it becomes useful to you and so that instead of you're not even having to look at your watch to do things you just can simply take a note and see an acknowledgement in the in the corner of your eye even if it's even if it's a little monochrome patch uh, in your peripheral vision that says okay i confirm that you've you've created this note here's the text of the note that you've di dictated or here is the your next turn when you need to navigate to some place or here is a translation of this menu thing that you're looking at that to me is way more interesting than anything that apple showed back in june 
and I think personal that, opinion. For as advanced as this headset is, I think it is still version one. And I think Apple, of course, of I course. think Apple has a vision of exactly what you're talking about. You put a little glasses on that are the size of the, you know, the thickness of my glasses, and it just does the thing. It's just that the technology isn't there yet. And I think that the, I think that you have to start somewhere. And I think this is where they're starting. Um, I do think that there are many cases in which you know I've used uh, the meta or not or the Oculus and other things for like, for instance, flights. And man, I got to tell you. <laughs> a long flight with VR is pretty awesome. Like you just, you, you know, you, you basically, you know, I eat before I get on the plane. I don't need to interact with anyone. I sit next to the window. I put the thing on, I put the headset on. I don't have to think about anybody until I, until, and then I, I land on the other side and I've watched a couple of movies. I, I've played a couple of games. I've done a couple of things. And so there's, there's definitely also times when it would be great to not have to interact with other people. Sure. <laughs> so, so, so I think that, I think that there's, there's definitely people that, that would find value in the ability to. That's what headphones are for. Disconnect. <laughs> well, I no, to, I, so when I, I don't, when I don't use it, I have these little, these big things that go over my eyes that have like a little cavity, you know, on yeah. them so they don't, yeah. you know, and I put them on yeah. and I put my, my air, my, my AirPod Max what or whatever on yeah. and I, and I kind of just, just kind of go in and I, and, but that's all dark. And when you can put a headset on, you can actually watch movies and do other things and do or, the same thing. I like to sleep. Just, so. a, just out of curiosity, Alex, how many times have you like uh, heard the, heard the, the announcement to put your seat backs up and trade tables down, turn off electronics and discover that something has been sharpied on your face? <laughs> never had has that happen. Has it happened more than once or never? <laughs> never had that happen. Yeah. Okay. Cause that, that would be my big, that would still be my big fear. This is, uh, yeah, yeah. this is probably uh, sleeping. I'd probably feel it if they were doing it during <laughs> while I was talking. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, this is how I, uh, I travel is with, uh, but actually Lisa has, um, <laughs> Lisa has, uh, that's uh, how you keep that middle seat free. Yeah. No yeah. No one wants to ever seat. sit next to me. Lisa has, uh, a pair of these, uh, uh, blindfolds that say F off. Which also is effective. Uh, and then she has another set. I think these are intended for planes to say, wake me for meals. So that's a good, that's a useful one. Wake yeah. me for meals. Yeah. I'm going to do a red eye, go back to see my mom in a couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, I plan I just to, can't sleep on planes. That's my problem. Well, I, I, I fly a lot. After flying southwest to Baltimore to Providence <laughs> last time, <laughs> right. I decided to splurge and spend a few hundred dollars more in lie flat mint. Uh, out to yeah, Boston, yeah. and then I will sleep. Yeah, and I will. Uh, I hope wake somewhat refreshed five hours later. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> um. Uh, uh. Well, we just you know what we're gonna find out. We probably shouldn't spend a lot of time talking about the Vision Pro too late, uh, because that's all we're gonna be talking about for the next four <laughs> months. So, yeah, uh, save all those thoughts. Five, five years. Five years, maybe, or maybe not. First. First person to figure out how can I defeat the safety feature so I can drive while wearing these. There must be a, some clever trick that I can come up with. I think a couple of things you want to put on your bingo card. First person on an airplane you spot wearing them. Uh, <laughs> first person walking around town you spot wearing them. Uh, yeah, they're really built against that. So it'll be really interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really People designed want to do sedentary. that. You know they want to wear them. They to, talk about it, but I think that the whole design is really built around not moving. Yeah, like it's right, not... Exactly. Not, not changing yeah. place. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can't use the AR, the augmented reality function, to just be. <laughs> my understanding to walk around. My understanding is is that the walking around thing is definitely something. I don't know how they defeat that, but it really yeah. is something that it's that's really built into the system that you're not yeah, going to do that. And um, then the the third thing on your bingo card reasons. is somebody driving their car wearing them. That will be. <laughs> that will be. Then you'll know the end times have come. Uh, speaking of the end times, we have a lot of other stories, but we'll just save them for next week because we got to get them out of the uh, way before the Vision Pro is released. Because uh, that's <laughs> all, inventory. again, all we're going to be talking about. Uh, and who's going to buy one? you going to buy one, Alex? You're going to buy one. You're going to get in line? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jason, you're going to buy one, you think? <laughs> yeah, you unless, I, you know, I, I hope I'm in the media review program and right. I get one that way. But it is sort of my business to do Apple platforms. So, yeah, but, I suspect I will have to buy one when they make me give the one that's the that problem hopefully will give me back because the media review you it get goes. it for a couple of weeks right and then you send it back something like that or something like this that's probably it'll probably be a really tight time horizon yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely so you know sometimes they're like hey keep that mac until may right <laughs> like, okay great uh <laughs> but other times it's like uh it's not that way yeah and well, we've, we've definitely we've had got that some happen before. second tier reviewers we want to send it to after we send it to you yeah they, right we, and we don't have that many because we can't make right. that many so we what we right. you, you have it for two weeks and then you have to give it up because then somebody else has to get it john gruber gets to get it after you 
No, that's no. not how that works. <laughs> Gruber, I'll just tell Gruber, hey, I'm next up. Send this to me no, you when get you're Gruber done with it. We'll do you ever do get, it that sometimes way. you get a device. I haven't done this in a long time, but sometimes you get a device you know somebody's had before you, and then maybe they leave stuff on it. Have you ever, has it ever happened? Apple's, I, I mean, since I mostly do Apple stuff, Apple's real diligent about wiping that stuff yeah. and getting it set yeah. up for that. They don't, they don't do that. But yeah, I could see how I had have I, less diligent. I think I had a phone, this is twice. 30 years ago. I think I had a phone from Sprint that they had wiped the device, but it was still connected to a cloud because it was, because Sprint, when they lent you phones in those days, it wouldn't be your number. It'd be their number and their, their account. And it had other, it had his pictures in, in there. Uh, and that no kind of good. worried no me good. a little bit about future uses of uh, these. I, I've always really not liked loaner devices. I really don't like the idea. It's, it's a little creepy, especially since I'm like eighth tier. I'm the last guy <laughs> to get it. You know, like, I'll give it to Leo. All right. Unless it's Apple, in which case, never give it to Leo, whatever you do. We'll take a little break and come back uh, with your picks. Uh, believe it or not, we have come to the conclusion nearly of this show. You're watching Mac Break Weekly. Let's start the picks of the week with Alex Lindsay. In my head, I'm so going around. Thinking. It, it's an electronics thing that I've been trying to solve for a long time. It's not necessarily a <laughs> Mac Mac thing. I have this thing about wanting to have, so I, I you know, um, I have a thing about tires. I know this is crazy. Like I had a, I had a car that didn't have, that didn't inflate, that had a slow leak somewhere and I couldn't quite figure it out and everything else. And I always wanted to make sure the tires were exactly the same. And so I've become obsessed with it. And if you go to anywhere and you go to the, the, the car stop or whatever, you end up in the situation where you're not, um, you know, that thing is horrible. Like that little weird pin that comes out. It's not very accurate. It's very hard to do. I'm like, I just want to set the number, plug it into the tire and hit go. Oh, wouldn't that when be nice? when it's done, I want it to stop. And I want it to be small and I don't want to plug it into my, I had a couple rules because I, I bought, actually bought three or four of these now. And this is the one that I'm the happiest with when I just got it. Um, and so I bought this on Amazon over the break and and I I tested it out on my car. And so what this does this is U-Green, it's a tire inflator. Oh, this is it, cool. You charge it with USB-C. So you charge it with a USB-C okay. and it, it'll do up to 12 tires, I think, on one charge. Wow. So, you know, and so what basically it's loud. So know that you're not going to do this in stealth because it's it's a little thing with a little compressor in it. But you plug it and you just you just screw it onto your your tire. You set the 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 the, the target um in you know uh, PSI and you hit power and it goes. Oh, I'm buying this right now. And then you walk off. Two. And what, so I'm buying two. I'm buying three because <laughs> modern cars don't have uh, they don't have spares. Right, and so so the thing is is that I I I just hit it. I can hear it going. You can hear it well. Um, you know, and and so is it really loud? And I was. It's, it's not like, I mean, it's not like you need earplugs loud, but it's We loud. have a plug-in I mean, compressor my, that you don't want to be yes, around. You, we close, we <laughs> leave it's it. It's not as, I don't think it's as much as the plug-in compressor. And my problem was, is that I had one that you plugged into your, I've had a couple that you plug into your lighter. And I hated it because it's always wiring and where yeah, I get the yeah, wire yeah. and how do I do the thing. And this one is just battery operated. You plug it in, you plug it into the um, the thing, you hit, you, you set the, you set the, the PSI and you hit start i love this and it just starts going and the moment it hits the the target the target inflation it's done like it just stops and so what i did is i i, I went and i was cleaning cleaning out my doing the kind of the end of the year clean out the car and just let it set all the tires while i'm you know and it, it finishes i go move it to another tire i, I hit go again and it will work of course Ooh, it's with got schrader plus presta so i can use it with yeah, my it, bike and it's it, got a valve and gas pin for yeah. the basketball so it's got Oh. Yeah, so it's got a lot of different pin, little pins in it. Um, I but but the thing is, is it's nice and small. It's uh, it fits into your hand, and you can put it. I ha, I can put it in under my stuff, and you know, like in you my gotta remember between, to keep it charged, though, seats. huh? Yeah, but I have a I have a oh, USB, USB I have a hundred watt have, USB C yeah, charger perfect. in my car, right? <laughs> so it's not hard. So to who do. doesn't? Yeah, and yeah. Pop it off when you're driving, you know, around or whatever, and. And so, but the, the key is, is it just sits in your car. You just plug it into the thing. I never have to think about that stupid 
like one at the gas station, you know, and w- go in and ask and remind the person that in California, by law, they have to give it to you for free, you know, like, you know, yeah, um, you know get, which is true, you know, and they'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they give it to you for 25 seconds and then you're like, oh, and then you go back and ask again. And so, um, and so if you just, you know, if you're like me and you want all the time, because if it pulls a little bit, if my car pulls a little bit, I'm like, oh, I got to fix the time. Well, this is also for my bike. I think that's, this would be really great because it, it works for your bike. It works, really for, it works for any cool. of those things. But the key is you set, you set, what I wanted was I don't want something to tell me what to do. I wanted to say, I want you to get to whatever that is, whatever the, the, the PSI is, the, and it lets you switch from PSI to bars or, you know, it's all the different, you know, it's nice. got these different, so, that you set it up and you hit go. Um, anyway, I've had three or four different ones. This is the first one that I've gotten. It's fully battery operated. Um, and I've, I have a lot of you green stuff for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know if it's my concern would be, not, does it generate lot. enough? It's so tiny that it actually can pump up the tire, but you have one. It does. And you say it, it takes does. a while. It works. It's not fast. It's yeah. not like it's going to be, you know, it took a couple minutes to, for, to go a couple, you know, like six pounds or something like that. So. I'm blowing it as hard but, as I can. But because it stops, you go about and do doing other things. Like for me, it was like cleaning the car while I was yeah. putting the whole, you know. Uh, you don't have to stay there. Yeah. You don't have to stay there and stand there. So it's it's not, and it's it's light enough that it's small enough and the cable is short enough that you do like feel like you have to put something under it but it did just hang from the thing i don't think i would do that normally but i let it hang to see I if think it was it's designed hang, to hang. do that it looks like it's tiny it's <laughs> tiny and just i just plugged it in and hung it from the right. from the tire and it just just did its thing nice so i don't i wouldn't suggest i like that. this it's a good recommendation can, this is yeah, great it's, it's it's really nifty and, and i here's what happened was here's the worst part is this is how it works is that i i didn't know that this existed I saw an ad for a different one on TikTok, of course. Like I, there was an ad for like, you can do this thing. And I was like, that exists? Then I searched Amazon for all, the, I didn't touch the one on TikTok, but I went to I went to the Amazon and searched all of them and found a brand that, I, that I've that i bought other things from and then ended up with that one and it works great. So anyway, there you go. Nice. Jason has recommended one that looks like an alien. It's a lot bigger too, right? But that's what yeah, you use, Jason. Yeah, it's bigger. It's a Ryobi. Uh, yeah. It's got, if you've got Ryobi stuff, it uses the same batteries, ah, but it's nice. the same idea. It, it's a, These products are great. And once you discover them, because they will pump up yeah. your bike pump, your right. bike tires and your car tires. And right. the set it and forget it of being able to dial in a PSI oh, and man. press a button and walk it's away so is so great. It's such a great idea. Yeah. And so, yeah, when I'm on long car trips, I put that one in the in the car idea. so that yeah. with a with a charge battery and and then you just yeah you just you know dial it in and press the button and off it goes. It's, I should get the one that matches loud, my great. battery because we have Makita, I think. So I'm sure Makita makes. Yeah, one. so they may Probably make they one, make that, one that has right. all the same battery yeah. shapes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I yeah, wanted one cool. that was just super small that fit underneath. Yeah, this I could put in the glove compartment. It looks great. Looks like yeah. Yeah, it looks great. I'm sure the Ryobi will go much faster <laughs> than, than it this is, one. It is big. Yeah. So, it's like so, a, you know, little kind of, you can see the hand grip on it. It's, it's, yeah. it's like a little tiny briefcase. It's like and a boom all box. the other ones it's I've a had are bigger. Yeah. yeah. I think the thing is all, all the other ones I kept in my, I kept in my trunk, but now I have this caravan. So there's no trunk. Like when I have it all down and I, I have this obsession with keeping it very empty. So I just, I have this whole thing, like everything has to stay, it stays very empty because I know, never know what I'm going to throw some in it. So. I just, uh, I just bought a new BMW and if you have a low tire, you have to actually bring it to the dealer and they charge you $500. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> would you, would be but surprised. you believe it. Every they say BMW like, stands for bring my wallet. Because yeah, only mean, only the dealership oh has gosh. the special software so That's you can right. code the air to match <laughs> exactly. the stem. You know, I would totally I believe it. I would totally I own, believe as, it. I own a BMW. I don't I don't have one right now, but it, because it, I wrote it until I died. But it was I had a BMW for 30 years and I just assume when I take it to the shop, it's a thousand dollars. Yeah. Like I don't know what it's gonna happen. I don't know what they're gonna find. It's just I just, I, just I, I don't it. take it to the shop until I've got a thousand dollars because I know that it's gonna be a thousand dollars. This is an electric vehicle. And they told me. You know, your first two services are free, but your third one's going to be 1100 bucks. I said, for what? Changing the wiper fluid? There's oh, yeah. nothing to maintain. I don't understand. Yeah. Anyway. It's, gonna, it's, it's BMW. It's, it's BMW. Yeah. It's electric. So there's Here's that. Here's the worst part. Is that at some point, I'm like, the next car I get after the caravan, I'm like, is another BMW? Like, like still going to go back. I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment. But, but it's I, fun but to I, drive. I love the van that I have now. So. Lisa, yeah. Lisa. Which uh, one did you get? I got the i5. Uh, it's a five series with a electric, all electric drivetrain. I like it a lot. Wayne has the eight. <laughs> oh, that's three better. Very fast. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, it's, we it's went, uh, Lisa said, can I drive it home? Car. We went out to the, the ocean uh, the other day and she said, can I drive it home? I said, yeah. 
I look over at the, I'm just kind of, it's, you know, it's nice. It's comfortable. I'm looking over and I look at the speedometer. It's 103 miles an hour. Electric cars, man. That's what happens. That's <laughs> how they get you. said, Lisa. <laughs> she said, it's okay. I'm passing. My, 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 uh, my, um, uh, when my when my, when my car went bad, Colleen lent me the i8 one time. Oh for God, for hers for is like amazing. And my kids, my but kids that's really a stick. That's a manual son of a bitch. Take them to school. Yeah, she likes the i8. Stick. No, no, no. It's, no, it's it's electric. I oh, mean, she's growing up. Oh, she's growing up there. Yeah. Well, no, she's got the yeah. She's got a lot of cars. She likes so anyway, sticks. So, so anyway, I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like sticks. So I'm I'm yeah. I'm a, I grew up on tractors. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm very happy with uh, this. Is my old man. Car. So does the BMW, does that one have the, it, does it have the M, the M shifting gears or is it all just electric? It it's just all electric. Up? You got a little. Cause the, the, like thing. the M, the M series had the, what I liked about the, it was the, it was the, you could do a stick and treat it like a stick. Oh yeah. That's silly. If you have an electric, there's no need for a stick. Give me a break. Well, it has a shifter, it, right? which is just a little, le little lever. Oh, right. It's a but then lever there is on the end. steering wheel, there is a, a paddle that says boost. Mm -hmm. Right. I've been yeah. too afraid to use it. I don't. I don't want to. I don't know what that's going to happen. <laughs> and then you fly. It just takes you into. It takes exactly. you into space. <laughs> does it right have then. a three sixty? The, the i eight. The i eight has a three sixty camera. Oh, the on cameras the top, are amazing. Like, it's got. You six, can see everything around. You. Nowadays, it's got this thing has six cameras. Yeah. So yeah, you can see every. You can see inside the car. You can see uh, outside. So it's like, the it's the like a helicopter view. It, you, it you get like the, they call it car so it wash like view. It's actually a car wash view, like. Okay, I like to watch my car get washed. I guess I don't know, but it's the yeah, it's the top down. But you can see, but you can see if you're yeah, you can yeah, see you can see everything you when you're parking. Yeah, you can yeah. see everything. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, I did find out that the LED headlight assembly is five thousand dollars. So do not break <laughs> your expensive. Do yeah. not hit anything ever. This is this why car. I'm hanging on to my my Dodge Caravan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yay, yay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should have bought a Dodge Caravan. That thing's never gonna die. The seats fold in. The seats <laughs> yeah. fold. The, the yeah. seats. The seats fold in. Yeah. Uh, when you need go them, you can have them. When you don't, yeah. you have a truck. Yeah. You can go camping. Yeah. Yes. And the answer yeah. is yes. Yes, you can. And you can put like eighteen cases of um, Pelican cases into it if you need to. And it's it's nice. It's perfect for you, Andy and Akko. I don't drive very much. Ick of the week. Uh, mine is something that will definitely be up the up the street of Generation X. It will probably, I think, be fun for just about anyone though. Uh, Cable Sasser, one of the founders of Panic Software, has been obsessed with a relic of '80s technology uh, <laughs> salesmanship uh, called the DAC catalog. This is the, there used to be this catalog of this very very weird reseller by the name of Drew Kaplan, and it was a catalog full of like. CD players and radar detectors and laptops and computers and, and Walkmans, but it was written with the the bombastic style of a 1908 newspaper ad <laughs> for patent medicine. I they love it. Just they were just immensely entertaining. I I will I've only selected one quote at random. I didn't like. I looked. I clicked on the very first copy of this catalog. I used to get this catalog. First page. Yeah, I yeah. used to get it in the like, mail. Yeah. So it's, it's, I'm quoting here: "The Pentagon may pay billions for the new stealth bomber that flies automatically and is invisible to enemy radar, but you could have TX <laughs> stealth reversing automatic cassette sure. deck, DBX that can even record the full dynamic range of CDs for less than the price printed on TX February 1986 dealer cost sheet." Uh, he's he wrote a really great article about this in 2012 and he's been researching the history of these catalogs ever since and the, the creme de, de la creme of this research is he just like uh, he completed his collection of these like monthly like tech catalogs from the 80s and early 90s and uploaded them all to the internet archive and oh, oh my thank God, you cable such a, thank such you such a hoot to read Ugh. like I said if again if, if you're Generation X I was like oh I remember what the, what a what a, what a knockoff Walkman you said oh wow yeah yeah the, the uh, to get FM radio, it had this little cassette insert that would go into the cassette. Oh, I, I remember that. But it's not just all about nostalgia. It really is about here is like what was like kind of hot and slightly off brand stuff, but still quizzically 
good quality maybe stuff in the 80s but the copywriting on each of these things it's not just like here's a catalog here's a little square here's a paragraph underneath it here's another picture another i mean he would spend four pages talking about this epson laptop uh with a four line by oh, eight yeah. line by 80 character lcd and word star built in and the damn text would just absolutely sing and and again maybe it was a useful laptop maybe it wasn't but Damn, for the price of like mailing in a, a tear out card from Popular Science and giving them your address, you got a lot of entertainment for that castle. So <laughs> much fun, and it really, if if kids, if you're uh, interested in what we thought was state of the art, the Vision Pro from 1991. This is the place to go. <laughs> yes. Uh, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. A lot, a lot of look upon my works in despair. <laughs> yeah, in a, lot of, in a lot of these yeah. products. Quite a few Ozymandias <laughs> products here. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is back when stereo was a big thing. Ooh, look, a yep. pirate TV station. Transmit a blockbuster video from your family room VCR to the TV in your upstairs bedroom. Grab a <laughs> ball game from cable and beam it to a TV in your workshop. And now just $69. That was the other thing. They were all cheap, right? Yeah. Yeah. 386 I mean, it's, it's it, XS, it wasn't like Billy XS. 19. It wasn't like salvage lots. He would just, uh, the cable has a really great article on his blog that I'm, that I'll I have to, that. I have to, it gives uh, all the scholarship yeah. behind it. I have uh, to read but, it at cable's blog because I grew up with this catalog. I mean, grew yeah. up, hell, I, no, was, a, again, I was an adult. This is, uh, I, I have, I have clear memories in junior high school of like getting popular science out of the, out of the school library and just like reading it during, you know, Western Civ class, just reading these ads of this just bizarre, like who is this person and what life has this person led to give him this kind of idea? He was, there's a, he, he had his own, uh, he, uh, he uh, had a, a, brand, a line of radar detectors and he was always like a, like a WWE wrestler, like taking out like uh, escort who was like the biggest like manufacturer at the time. Like we're challenging you. We'll give you, we're betting you $20,000. You choose the highway. You choose the radar detector. You choose the, the interference systems and we will beat you on that highway somewhere in the next Continental does and give you this check for twenty thousand dollars if you. And here's a picture of the twenty thousand dollar check. Like, oh my god! By the way, escort turned down that head to head challenge. So there, there you go. So there, they 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 could not match that energy. They could not. That, that was they didn't fear losing. They feared looking like dopes in front of a master salesperson. It's like, if, this, if this is if this is not a new like Apple TV Plus series. By the way, <laughs> you, by the way. It, the, according to Cable Sasser, the conclusion was hidden in the page break. Uh, no, uh, our Maxon didn't win. No, we aren't better than Passport and Escort. Hey, but we didn't lose either. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, there you go. Look, here's the extra switch mistake. <laughs> Uh, an extra switch at the same closeout price. You get an extra switch. This is so good. Thank yeah. you for bringing back these memories. This is fantastic. This is, this is why Internet Archive is such an important oh. thing. All, all you need is like everybody ha, Everybody is a nut on one topic. Everybody yeah. is an obsessive completist on one piece yeah. of media. And all you got to do is get that one person to say, oh, by the way, could you take that folder of scans that you've been building for the past 12 years and just put them on the Internet Archive? And now it, is, it has not been lost to history. It's not, I, uh, it's like, it's not just it's not just nostalgia. It really is like a really cool piece of history. During the break, I, uh, uh, you know, the Christmas break, I I, I decided to uh, get, start donating monthly to the uh, Internet Archive because, A, they need it. They are a 501c3 charity, and B, uh, we use it. <laughs> it's a great yeah, resource. Exactly. It's a really important historic resource, and I want to support Brewster and the Internet Espe Archive. Especially after January 1st when, like, now things are falling out of copyright yeah. from, like, from 90-something yeah. years ago. It's pretty like, exciting. If you, want to find, if you want to find a copy of something that is out of copyright, it will almost certainly be on the Internet yeah. Archive. Well, and, even, and even a lot stuff of stuff that that's, that's in copyright, copyright, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay, there's that as well. But, the copyright? Uh, what's that? <laughs> I would, I would, I would, uh, in 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 weak defense, I would put it to you that there is a lot of stuff that is like not public domain, but it is abandoned because the, by by the time one media company is bought by another media company is bought by another media company, maybe there's something valuable in a B movie from 1968, and nobody knows who's, who owns it anymore. And so, if somebody said, you know what, I'm going to put it up on the Internet Archive. 
if somebody decides that they own it, great. They come out of the woodwork and pay and demonstrate that they own it and then take it back. That's great. But otherwise, I don't want this. I don't want this knockoff of, of a beach movie, Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine. It should not be lost to history just because it's not available on streaming today. Just visit, uh, just visit archive.org. I just realized I went yeah. and I clicked the link. They have the entire Two Cows software library. This, yep. They've preserved it, including... Uh, here's one that I'm definitely getting, the Jenny McCarthy uh, download. It's shareware that is changing pictures of actress and model Jenny McCarthy. Uh, you know, you got to have that for your 386. Mm. Well, they, well, they also have, they also have like Macintosh and Apple II simulators and pretty much oh, every yeah, that's, computer that's, you can think yeah, of. You, so if you, you, so hyper, if you want to, if you, you want to try card. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so, if, so if you want to actually try out, here's what Mac Draw, Mac Write, and Mac Paint were like back in 1985, 1986. You can spend a couple hundred dollars or three hundred dollars on a Mac Classic, and then another five hundred dollars getting it working, and then another two hundred dollars for like the media converters and readers. Or you can go to archive.org, <laughs> click a couple buttons, save yourself a lot of expense, a lot of leaking capacitors, a lot of space in your uh, in your desk. By the way, uh, credit to Two Cows because unlike many other publishers, they donated this entire collection. Uh, yeah. to the Internet Archive. And that's that's how you should do it, you know. Jason Snell, pick of the week. Uh, we mentioned Peter Gabriel earlier, reminded me, and, and you talked about the album cover being very Peter Gabriel and very AI-like as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, reminded me, Peter Gabriel was one of the frequent collaborators of the legendary design firm Hypnosis oh, that yeah. made many of the most influential album covers of the 70s and 80s including dark side of the moon and lots of led zeppelin all the pink floyd and all of peter gabriel um there is a documentary that's out there that you can rent called squaring the circle the story of hypnosis Gr i watched this on my sick day a few weeks ago it is amazing uh, especially if you like the bands from that era but it's also such a great story about commercial art about the push and pull between designers who are trying to be brilliant and forward thinking and cutting edge and clients that don't always agree but sometimes do agree but sometimes don't agree and sometimes the clients agree but their agents or their publishers their rec or their record album uh, publishers do not agree with them and i thought if you're interested in the history of design even if you don't care so much about pink floyd or peter gabriel or anything like that it is as somebody who used to do magazine covers with designers and artists <laughs> and things like that. Oh, it hit home of like, how do you create something that is not a pure expression of art, but instead needs to be part of a larger process and you want to be creative, but you are also essentially selling a product or at least somebody in the chain of authority is trying to make money with this thing. It might not be the artist or the musician, it might just be the record label, but uh, how much pull does the artist have? Do they, uh, you know, there are cases where Pink Floyd is like, nope, or Led Zeppelin is going to be like, yeah, we're going to spend all this money on this photography and then we're going to wrap it in opaque paper and put it out that way with no so people don't even know what it is. It's very much the inspiration for Spinal Tap's Black Album story <laughs> in, that, in that movie. Anyway, it is a really well done uh, it's Anton Corbin who has collaborated. He's a great photographer. He uh, directed this. He's collaborated with lots of musicians, most notably, I think you too, shot Rattle and Hum. Um, it's a great documentary. Oh, I can't wait One to see One of it. the two hypnosis guys is still alive, although they've got archival footage of the other guy as well. And it's just, and at a, at a base level also, if you just want to be like, hey, how, what is the story behind that very weird Paul McCartney and Wings cover from 1973? <laughs> Oh, it's in there. It's all in there. So, nice. uh, or like, let's let's spend a million dollars flying photographers and child models to a remote Icelandic <laughs> beach in order to shoot this thing. That then we look at the pictures and we're like, "Nah, that doesn't work." It's like, oh my god, how much money did you just spend? It's all in there. The excess and they and like I said, I think the the brilliance of the the challenge of being a commercial artist where you have. It's not just about your art. It is also about a product. Great documentary. Really worth watching. Uh, squaring the Circle, 
The story yeah, of it's hypnosis. It's not streaming free anywhere. You need to you gotta you buy need it. To, it's on uh, iTunes. Rent it. If I can figure Just out, rent it. if I can figure it out how to buy it, I will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on iTunes, I will definitely want to see this. This looks incredible. Really, good. really, really good. Yeah. And they did those amazing Peter Gabriel albums with the melted oh, yeah. face and yeah, the yeah. scratching <laughs> and the and and there's a great story in there about his first album where he's like, I don't really want to be on it, but the but the the record company wants me to be on it. And literally, the one of the hypnosis guys is walking outside in London, and it has just rained, and there's a brand new polished car there with the water in oh, globules yeah. running off of it. And he's yeah. like, "What if we put him in a car? In the car. Yeah, and then shot the car, but you can see he's in there. Could we? And it really is very much like, would that be cool? Yes. Could we get away with telling the record company that he is technically?" in the album art and therefore <laughs> you you said it would be okay yes okay let's do it and that and that's what they did yeah there he is you could see him kind in of the through, car I, kind of through I, the window <laughs> hard to see but he's there he's there <laughs> wow I, I i pushed me over the edge i, I saw this uh, a couple weeks ago and i was like oh should i get that and i was like i'm gonna get around to it now Oh, God. It's really good. I, I waited like see. i mean i heard about it two years ago i think and yeah. it's finally i just had a sick day and i'm like you know what <laughs> That's a movie that my wife does not want to watch with me. So I'm just going to watch it now. And I am glad I did. It was great. Exactly. And I, she got home and I said, I watched a great documentary you would not have cared about, which is great. <laughs> Yeah, glad you got that out of your system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always, that's when I watch Helvetica. You know, I know Lisa's not really going to want to see it. I so. was going to ask story. if you watch True story. If liked Helvetica. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, that's, that's yeah. a light. You do not care me. about this detailed of design documentary. It's fine. I'll just watch I'll it. I'll just myself. watch it myself. Yeah. Just Actually, yeah. I made a big mistake because I watched Maestro, the new uh, movie about, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Leonard Bernstein. It, yeah, Leonard Bernstein on uh, on Netflix, and uh, and halfway through, Lisa comes in. She says, "Why are you watching this? This looks great." I said, "It is great. It's very interesting." Uh, anyway, sometimes you make a mistake. That's all. <laughs> if I'd had hypnosis, I would have done it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jason Snell. You're still doing six colors in 2024, yes? I mean, I, I haven't yet, but yeah, that's the plan. Later today, perhaps, I'll <laughs> he, get started with that. I got time to make the donuts, yeah. Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll get on it. And if Go you want to know what year. podcast Mr. Snell does, well, there's a whole page dedicated to it, sixcolors.com slash Jason. And yeah. there's quite a few of them. There's lots. lots. It happens. Podcasts, podcasts happen, happen including the new Magnum podcast. Which is a seasonal uh, yes. podcast we, about random episodes of the original of Magnum PI, Magnum starring PI. Tom Selleck. It, that has been. <laughs> let me tell you. I mean, it is the least consequential podcast I do, but it's with two friends of mine who also are about my age, yeah. and we, you know, drink beer and sit around and watch these old Magnum episodes. And it, it is a shot of nostalgia, and we make jokes. It is fun to fun. analyze something that was never meant to be analyzed. Certainly not in the far future. And it is. It is a laugh riot on that level too so it's like it's not important and yet it is it is hilarious yeah. so i'm happy to do that just that is the most the, the ultimate hobby podcast is watching old episodes of an old tv show that did not it. ever need to be analyzed in any way it <laughs> is hilarious season six episode 20 just out so don't, it is don't oh miss. yeah check it out there's so many we've covered we've i think we've covered about half of the show wow. now which may mean it's time to stop Quite frankly, because we we they're not quite random. We pick them, and I think I think there's not a lot left that we want to subject ourselves to. But it has been a fun ride. Oh, the eighties! Whoa, the eighties! But they say the past is another country. Here's, that is. Here's the TV guide uh, thumbnail from uh, wow. episode seventy nine of your Magnum PI podcast. In an episode that teaches us that friendships are like sponges, Magnum and TC repeatedly commit <laughs> crimes and visit jail. Meanwhile, Rick wins the lottery and meets a travel agent doing a survey of the hotel <laughs> hotels of the Southwest. And a guy who drives a melon truck has the best day in the history of melon trucks. Man, that's true. How, it's totally, how could you miss totally that? True. That's, that sounds so good. That, Magnum. That is what happens the in podcast. that episode. That's a, it's great when you get a good one there where it's really zany and wacky. It's When, it, when it's boring and stupid, it's not as fun. It's just a chance you take. <laughs> Thank you, Jason Snell. Andy Anako, GBH is calling. Jason, did you see the sunrise this morning? Ah, reference acknowledged. Thank you. Thank you very is much. Is that yeah, a Magnum PI reference? Took, took a is that oh, a, that is the peak pinnacle Magnum PI reference. Is from did you? Yeah, did you see the you sunrise? It's the name of the episode. Yeah, Every, oh, wow. everybody was talking about that on the playground the yes. next day in 1982. Let me tell you, because that was. 
our fun loving our fun loving Vietnam War vet. That is that what, is that the, the one in, he in which the guy in cold blood? Cold is that blood. the one in which Magnum <laughs> comes out of the closet or no? A, a Russian spy kills his, blows up the Ferrari with his friend inside. Oh. He tracks down the Russian spy. It turns out the Russian spy is not just that, but a guy who tortured him in Vietnam and all of that. You got to make it real bad, right? And then right. he ta- he he takes him uh, and and the the guy Ivan, of course, is the yes. name of the Russian spy. Of says. <laughs> Uh, he he's there, and, and Magnum asks him if he saw the sunrise at the Pali Lookout because I, 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 that's I, I, what I, his I, friend did. I, I, I even oh gave him God. the big the, the, the big speech of, "Well, you're not going to shoot me. You're one of the good guys. I, yeah, exactly. I, I've got I've got diplomatic immunity. There's no you, I can't be touched. That's how I am the winner. You are the user." And he walks away, and Magnum, and we're all thinking, "Oh, well, we know Magnum. He's just going to accept that. You know, he there are lines he will not cross. That he just simply says, Ivan." Did you, because that was the last thing his friend said to him. His like, friend did, before he died. Did you, yeah. did you see the sunrise this morning? Like, and he's confused. They just simply raises the gun, muzzle flash, and freeze an frame. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody, I still talk to people our age today, and I mentioned that, and they're like, "Oh, oh my god!" I, don't, I mean, and at the time there was no internet. It was literally it's just a on the playground. Thing, but it really happened. <laughs> but it did to every. <laughs> oh my god, that was the biggest thing in 1982 on that on that one day after that Friday because it was on Thursday nights. That was a Friday on the playground where everybody was talking about Magnum PI. I'm telling you, wow. in 1982. I think we made, just made your little podcast a lot bigger. I gotta say. Mm. And if you want to hear nonsense about the 80s, it is a place you could go. There are many, but that is one of them. Uh, did you do uh, Did you do the Sunrise episode? Or is it? Is it? Yeah, well, that was like episode two. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? We did the pilot, and then are we you did, did you see the sunrise. How yes. can you not? You never know where you're going to get canceled. You, got, you would be kicking yourself if you got canceled before you did that episode. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it was episode five. You did it May 6th of 2020, okay, right in the middle of the uh, COVID crisis. Uh, well, that's why, I mean, obviously that's why we started doing it, right? Is that when we were we trapped inside our homes. In our okay. Our little yeah, lives, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. You yeah. were there with a lantern, a match onto our feet. And uh, whatever you do, don't eat the snow in Hawaii. Uh, once again, I'll try again. <laughs> it's cocaine. It's uh, okay. cocaine. Oh, wow. The snow is, don't eat the snow because it's cocaine. It's, oh. it's the 80s. Again, it's the 80s. It's the 80s. Yeah. Uh, Andy, are you going to be on GBH or or not? Yes, uh, yes. not this not this Thursday, but uh, next Thursday exactly. at twelve thirty five p.m. Go to wgbhnews.org to stream it live or later. We count on that, hmm. Mr. Andy Anako. Do you have? Is there an Orthodox New Year's as well? Do you have a second New Year's Day to celebrate as well? Yes, uh, it's the technically the Feast of Three Kings, uh, and so it's about on the sixth. I think I have to. I've, I'm I'm such a good Orthodox Christian that I have to double check to make sure I know when uh, when when Orthodox Christmas January sixth. Uh, it is Epiphany, and I will be yeah, exactly. So I will be having pierogi. They sometimes say yes, pierogi and cold kielbasa. As uh, in my in my house in my family, like we would have we would have like the December twenty fifth was the big blowout, and but there would still be like we do little Christmas of like very traditional like humble peasant food, cold food oh, things you don't need refrigeration how for. Fun. Maybe. How it nice. was I, I, I like it. You know, yeah. There, there are very, there are very few times in my childhood where I got to have like poppy seeds mixed with honey, and that was one of them. Yes. By the way, for some Orthodox churches who celebrate Christmas on January seventh, then they celebrate Epiphany on January nineteenth, just in case. You yes. know, you, you get extra. In other words, you could probably do it a <laughs> few times. Mister uh, Alex Lindsay, Office Hours Global. Did you take the holidays off? No, no, we don't do that. Of course not. We don't do that. We had it on not. Christmas. We had it on New Year's. Really? You had, actually you know, had one we, on Christmas? Wow. We did. We did. Wow. We just did Q&A. Yeah, did Q&A for Christmas and then went and opened presents. So, yeah, it was good. It was a good. Um, uh, it was a great couple of weeks. We Last week, we really talked about what we liked and didn't like about the year before and what we want to do in the future. And today, we're kind of, this week, we're talking about what we think is going to happen. So, each day of oh, different, fun. in different verticals. And so, we're, we're having a, having a good time. Yeah. And we, uh. Today and was so, graphics getting, trends, tomorrow's yeah, so audio about, trends, and video infrastructure and education. That's exciting! Wow. Yeah, yeah. So we, so we're, um, so we, you know, it's it's a good first week of the of the month, and then we have built a crazy format to do. I mean, just to we've got we've already figured out we got to fill 260 episodes, and so we're just trying to like you know get our head around what it takes to do 260 wow. uh, different things, and so we built a, a pretty crazy format for it. So it should be should be fun. Uh, I'm Green sure though that up. Michael Krasny took the holidays off. We are we are take we took a couple days a couple weeks off. We have we're coming back on the on the 12th. We have Jacques Pepin, which we're very excited. <gasps> you about. know what? It's so funny. Yeah. He has been revived in my life because he does oh TikToks. Goodness. And all and the, of a sudden, I'm so seeing, good. and they're the best TikToks ever. 
He has a. Um, he showed how to make he, spam into a steak dinner. No, he is. So what's what's amazing about him is he's such an amazing uh, chef that is obsessed with having people just cook well. Yes. Like it doesn't have to be complex. I'm not trying to impress you. I right. just want to show you how to, he yeah. has TikToks on like how to do your eggs in a real, and I if love you follow that one. instructions. I watched that one. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah. yeah they're really good. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so I love, he has a, there's a video. He has, he's done it a couple times, but there's a video from, I think the seventies or the eighties where he, de he debones a chicken. And I think there's like an AVI update uh, up, upload on YouTube. It is the best skills training video ever made in any in any genre like it like it's just in in because he's like you should be able to debone a chicken in a minute and takes him a couple more a couple more minutes to do it because he's explaining it to you but you can realize that he could totally debone a chicken in a minute yeah and and but he shows you, you just break it here do this thing do this thing and he but he's it's so clear and he's so good at it and there's just something about him so we're really excited i've been Watch, I've been like watching lots of his stuff and reading stuff, uh, you know, and um, and cooking his stuff to get ready for the show. But that's on the 12th. And then oh, I'll come the I can't. Well, I will be listening to that. Michael Krasny does such a great job with all his guests. And I've been yeah. watching these Jacques Pepin. He's back. You know, he's got yeah. all the old videos. But then he's it's like in his little French kitchen. And he says, well, man, we, you know, during the war, we didn't have much uh, to eat. So we made spam. <laughs> yeah, and it's well, like I, great. It's like the best thing you ever saw in your life. He's amazing. And I was, what I was amazed was he was this top chef in the seventies. He got into a car accident and he didn't think he could continue to be a chef, so he just said, "Oh, I'm going to do education." And that's kind oh, of the I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, so it was in the yeah, and and um, but what's amazing, it just didn't have his, the same movement on his one of his arms, and so he um, moved into this. So he's been doing this now for fifty years, wow. and uh, it's just uh, uh, amazing. Amazing. Anyway, so he's going to be on. Uh, I can't week. wait. Well, and that is at graymatter.show with Michael Krasny. Yep. Uh, and, uh, can you, it's a podcast, right? So you can subscribe to it. And the podcast, sure you, you can it. subscribe to the podcast, okay. Apple or Spotify. And, um, you can, uh, and then we, we do it for the subscribers. We do it live so they can ask, like, you can actually ask live questions. So we, you know, M Michael's asking, this kind of kicks off the show and then the, the subscribers will actually, oh, nice. um, you know, get to ask questions. So we'll, we'll take on maybe 10 or 15 questions from the, oh, from the great. viewers as well. So that it's, it, we were kind of experimenting with this idea of having a podcast where the audience is actually asking questions during the show as well so it's good a, yeah yeah uh gray matter dot show thank you alex thank you andy thank you jason thanks to all of you a couple of uh things i'd like to ask of you first of all we are doing our annual survey once again this is important for us uh as a way to get to know you better but also uh to um help us sell advertising which is kind of somewhat important to keeping the show on the road we don't sell your information at all we just sell it not sell it we don't even sell it we just collect it in aggregate so that you can we can then tell advertisers well the age group is this and that stuff like that so we never tell them anything about you but the survey helps us a lot if you would do me a favor go to twit.tv slash survey 24 and take our 2024 twit audience survey shouldn't take you more than about five minutes ten minutes if there's a question you don't want to answer don't uh it's fine with me or make up an answer that's fine whatever you whatever you need to do to preserve your integrity but it really does help us uh with uh with the uh business and speaking of helping us with the business i haven't put in a plug yet for a club twit but i would like to now uh especially as we head into 2024 your help is vital to keeping us on the air and keeping the shows going and 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 developing new shows. It's seven bucks a month, ad free versions of everything we do. Additional shows we don't put out in public. iOS Today's in there. The uh, Home Theater Geeks with Scott Wilkinson. Hands on Macintosh with Micah Sargent. Lots of uh, special content and of course the Twit Plus feed. But I think my favorite part is the wonderful Discord where you can hang out with other people. We were hanging out uh, in the Discord during the break talking about coding in our advent of code and uh, i i got a lot of help everybody did in fact that was one of the reactions i i noticed uh in the club twit discord uh is that this is a great community of like-minded people talking about whatever it is not just our shows but people are interested in all of that for seven dollars is a pretty good deal twit.tv slash club twit and we thank all that we got lots of new members uh during the holidays and i appreciate that maybe some gifts and so forth uh, I really appreciate that. It makes us uh, makes us hopeful uh, about uh, going forward. So hang out in the club. 
and uh, join us. Twit.tv slash club twit. We do Mac Break Weekly uh, every Tuesday, starting today <laughs> for the rest of the year. Uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. That's 1900 UTC. Uh, you can watch us live. That's why I tell you the times we record. We stream on YouTube as soon as the show goes on. Uh, the YouTube stream starts at youtube.com slash twit. Uh, after the fact, of course, it's a podcast, and the easiest thing to do is just subscribe, get Pocket Casts or Apple Podcasts, whatever it is you like, and subscribe to the show so that you will get it the minute it's available on a Tuesday afternoon. Thanks so much to our uh, technical uh, director, John Ashley, to our studio manager, Jammer B. And who will be editing the show today, John? Will it be you? Yes. Uh, John Ashley, our editor. We appreciate it. And I'm all just the other glad people. you didn't call me boy, boy producer. I'm never calling you that again because that's <laughs> that would be insulting and humiliating. I wouldn't say insulting. I don't want to call you a boy producer. You're a full-grown man. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, John Ashley, for uh, the work you do. We appreciate it, boy genius. Uh, we will uh, see you all next week. But now it is my sad and uh, uh, solemn duty to say get back to work because break time is over. We'll see you next time. Hey, we should talk Linux. It's the operating system that runs the internet, but your game consoles, cell phones, and maybe even the machine on your desk. But you already knew all that. What you may not know is that TwitNow has a show dedicated to it, the Untitled Linux Show. Whether you're a Linux pro, a burgeoning sysadmin, or just curious what the big deal is, you should join us on the Club Twit Discord every Saturday afternoon for news, analysis, and tips to sharpen your Linux skills. And then make sure you subscribe to the Club Twit exclusive Untitled Linux Show. Wait, you're not a Club Twit member yet? Well, go to twit.tv slash club twit and sign up. Hope to see you there. <laughs>